Not that long ago, there was a press conference. Here are a couple of moments. I'm coming straight for his neck. I promise you that. I promise you I'm coming straight for you. Behind closed doors, he's tricking the people. He's doing anything that he can to make the fight go to Vegas on a later date. But the fight needs to happen on April 20th at the Barclays here in New York. It's going to be a hell of an event. After their conversation, they had a stare down with a throne in the center, as the one who wins this rivalry can be rightfully recognized as the king. After a brief dive into the career of these two great boxers, there should be a logical conclusion. As we said in the beginning, we just have to follow the events and be happy that we live in the same era as such significant figures of this sport. All of us can't wait for this fight to take place. Leave a comment below if you want to see a breakdown of this fight. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss upcoming videos. And of course, hit the like button if you enjoyed this one. See you soon! Well, ladies and gentlemen, the wait is finally over. The main event is in the house tonight, and we are pleased to welcome you to Barclays Center here in Brooklyn, New York. Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions brings you tomorrow night's main event, the WBC Super Lightweight World Championship. It is presented by Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions, Haney Promotions, King Rye Promotions, and Matchroom Boxing. And on the stage with me right now, if you would be so gracious, please welcome Hall of Famer Bernard Hopkins. To my right, the Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya. And 13-time world champion, another Olympic gold medalist, Clarissa Shields. This fight tomorrow night brought to you by Wild Casino, America's most trusted online casino. Get wild, only fans, where creators earn. And Everlast, the choice of champions, the preeminent leader in boxing since 1910. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet tomorrow night's world title challenger and champion. First up, from Victorville, California, 24 and one. 20 knockouts to his credit. The former WBC interim lightweight world champion, please welcome King Rye, Ryan Garcia! And his opponent, well, Ryan wants to weigh in right now. One hundred forty three point two, one forty three point two. Official wait for Ryan Garcia.
ready to go for our second contest of uh, the prelims and uh, some weight allowances uh, being made here guys this one being fought at cruiser weight uh, kevin newman the second realistically uh, a super middleweight if not a middleweight he fought just above the middleweight limit last time out but as happens in uh, undercard fights sometimes get a little loose with the, uh, with the weight limit <laughs> somebody's a little undisciplined I'm gonna guess who it is. Are you testing my journalistic integrity? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like. What was wondering though? Robles is no relation to popular trainer Manny Robles. <laughs> well, unfortunately uh, for Kevin Newman, he has to have the tassels cut off, guys. That's that's heartbreaking. How can they do that? Oh man. That a new rule the in Fighting over fashion. Are, are no tassels allowed here in, uh, in New York City? Well, it's just clashing. It's clashing with everything else, you know? What does it match the ref's outfit? It just, it just doesn't work. I mean, Hector Camacho had, he had tassels on, on every portion of his body, I feel like. Everywhere. And so did Metal Metal Pius. He had tassels on his gloves. Round one underway. Kevin Newman the second, protege of Roy Jones Jr. And Automatically, you can just see in, in the stance, in the cadence, <laughs> you know what Roy's been showing you. Exactly. Might not love the same kind of test, but I don't know. But he just made him lighter. It's faster. But he holds his hand back a little bit. Saw Newman scoring an eight round unanimous decision over Tilito Madera in August of last year on the Jake Paul and AP as a card. So did John Pascal. Chris Eubank Jr. when training with Roy. <laughs> they all were emulating him. No, but I think this was a style that Newman had for a while.
യഥാർത്ഥിംഗ് I think Robles is corner saying, "Okay, this round punch." <laughs> I think I heard that in Spanish. I don't know. <laughs> Newman's very methodical. <laughs> I need to get to the bottom of this tassel thing here in New York, Corey. I don't know. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> Obviously that's a rule section 1 like paragraph 3 <laughs> no tassels come on you should have read this that This is this is the stage the opportunity for you to express yourself fashion wise No it's a fight Round 3 begins Kevin Newman the second the second coming taking on Eric Robles in cruiserweight action and as we mentioned Kevin Newman the, the second realistically 168 pounder was staying busy here tonight obviously some uh, allowances being made here for uh, Eric Robles I think Newman heard Barack over here <laughs> what do you think he yeah, turned it up a little bit yeah well i mean if he, if he doesn't get the knockout and he goes back what do you think Roy tells him huh That's a good oh, question. We got the rounds that we needed or you need to step on you should have stepped on the gas you know, soon. At this point in his career, you know, he's coming off a, you know, winning streak but with three losses, it, it's time to turn up. So to speak, stop stop guys that you're supposed to stop, they should not That's what I was waiting to hear. That's what I was waiting to hear. Guys you're supposed to stop, you stop them. And not to say that he can even be stopped. Yes, he can because he's been stopped once. Here you go. That's the old question. And listen, if you're going to be one of the forces to be reckoned in this division, you got to stop a guy like Lopez. Sorry, no disrespect. Well, Newman the second really has kind of a a second chance in his career, a rebirth if you will, after getting out of his contract or being let go of his contract from Mayweather Promotions leaving that stable in 2020 mm -hmm. then you get the Roy Jones endorsement you basically get to do it all over again right i'm sure there were some people that wrote Newman off entirely now he gets that second chance and he has a good platform to make a little noise here tonight absolutely and look he has a skill and ability i i see the potential there but sometimes you need your foot on the gas more and that's the only thing that's lacking right I mean we you would think that the guys losing the way we talking about him. I mean, <laughs> no, we like you know expecting so much we like of him. That's all. <laughs> Definitely winning every second of every round. <laughs> Let's make that clear for those just joining us. The shot there from Newman, I uh -oh. think that one might have affected Robles who grabs a hold now. But 40 seconds remaining here oh. in round three. but time will be called here as Robles complaining about a shot behind the head, the referee agrees with that assessment accidental i think robles is just looking for a little bit of time but those shots can be very dangerous so uh, the ref has to take it seriously another chopping right hand from newman a moment ago and you see robles that still complaining Nothing in touch. Big sweeping right there from Newman. He tries to find a route to the body on the inside here. Trying to bump Robles off and make some room. Good right hand. A little sweat dropped on the Rock's nice vest over here. <laughs> <laughs> Newman turned it up this round. That one two got in there nice. And I think it was that right hand that changed Robles and and, and made him start complaining more because he's looking for a way out. Because that back of the head shot grazed him and didn't really hit him that flush.
Maybe Roy is telling us what you're screaming here on the broadcast. He has turned it up a notch. Round four begins. The sixth round affair between uh, Kevin Newman the second and Eric Robles. But guys, in looking at the replay, it was obviously a clean right hand that buzzed Robles in that sequence. But then when Newman followed up, he did hit him in the behind the head. And that obviously caused the break in the action. And down goes Robles after a shoe shine flurry on the inside. And Robles still gesturing to the back of his head. <laughs> and Barack, you... I'm sorry for laughing. Because I don't like to take that lightly. But it just doesn't look like he was really hit that flush in the he, back of the head. He, he was. I didn't see it on that, on that exchange there. Barack, you suggested that maybe Robles was looking for a way out of this fight and, and that that might be the door. If he wasn't fully committed to going the distance here tonight to walk out of it as Robles tumbles to the mat once more. I don't mind the push because it tells me that Newman means business now. He wants to get this guy out of here. And yeah, that's against the rules pushing him, right, buddy? <laughs> Good jab, wow. Okay. Oh, Wait, Robles firing back turning. to the body. I think Newman has the right idea. It needs to sit down on those shots, though, to really hurt this young man. Our Good body, body shot there. Trying to be fast and in and out is taken away from his, his power. <laughs> Roy Jones with the hands somewhat behind his back. I think he should go more. Okay. Oh. oh, hard shot again. Oh. That was not and that will just be waved off immediately. That looked like more so on the side of the head. No, to no me. that was on the side. It was not. It was on the face. It was not behind the head. That <laughs> shot waved Simon. off immediately, and that will do it. We, re we hear Roy saying it clearly, not behind the head. Let's, Let's take see. a look Let's at it here. We'll get a closer look. Landed. Boom. Side of the head. Legal shot. Yeah, absolutely a legal shot. Can't find fault in that shot right there. And the ref knew that, and he knows what Robles is trying to do. And he said, that's it. You don't want to fight anymore. You gave up. Great call by the ref. I love when the ref can read between the lines. Benji is stepping. <laughs> Well, coming up on Saturday, May the 4th, Canelo Alvarez and Jaime Munguia will finally do battle. This is the fight that Munguia has been dreaming about since he turned pro, and it will come to fruition live on DAZN pay-per-view Saturday, May 4th, from Las Vegas, Nevada. So Kevin Newman II uh, staying busy here at the Barclays Center, and we're ready to make this one official. Let's send it up to Joe Martinez. Second improves to a 16-3 and one. An easy victory over Eric Robles here tonight. See his trainer, Roy Jones Jr. Very confident in Newman's chances at making a run in the super middleweight division again tonight's fight at cruiserweight but we'll ultimately see newman the second back down at 168 or maybe even at the middleweight an easy night for kevin newman a bit of an awkward outing guys you know when you're in a situation like that, you're Kevin Newman, you have a guy like Eric Robles who, you know, we're not going to say he didn't try in that fight. Obviously, he stepped in the ring. He deserves respect for doing that, but wasn't throwing a lot of punches.
punches, wasn't presenting any kind of a challenge for Newman in this fight. Well, I'll say he wasn't really trying once no. he got in the ring. He tried getting it, but it didn't do much after. No, I, I think Robles came to get a paycheck, but he wasn't really trying to win. But I think I'm just convinced that Newman really came to get rounds and then took him out whenever he was ready. All right, we're ready for our next contest. Let's send it back up to Joe Martinez. Germany. Two fights ago, we saw him here on the zone on the Ben Dobson undercard in Las Vegas when he was knocked out by Ammo Williams. More recently, though, in fact, 17 days ago, he fought to a 10 round draw against Tumbu Nasai in Germany. So, in Boomba, no ring rust whatsoever as he steps into the ring to test a hot prospect in Amari Jones. Prospect Amari Jones has been a fixture on Devin Haney undercards throughout his young career, and he has done nothing but impress. Ten knockouts in his 11 victories. Most recently, that fifth round KO over Calisto Madeira in December of last year on the Haney Pro Gray undercard. He said, All I'm looking to do is make statements. Looking for another one here tonight. industry now because if you're making a list of the most exciting prospects in boxing today Amari Jones is probably on that list and he's underneath the Devin Haney umbrella this is a guy that probably would have made the US Olympic team he was ranked number one in the United States in two different weight classes as an amateur and he's with Devin Haney if you catch the eye of the undisputed lightweight champion and the guy who went up to 140 and beat the scariest guy in Regis Progray you got to be good 
look, Devin is obviously taking it serious. He wants to have, you know, once he's long gone, have fighters doing well and winning titles. Not just starting a promotion company just to say I'm a promoter, like many fighters. <laughs> I like Amari's jab. It's so fast and so sharp. I like his trunks, bro. I like the leather little strip. Oh, wait. Those are tassels. We got to cut them. <laughs> Good fashion statement. Here. Good hard jab from Amari Jones already. And Boo Boo has a, a high guard, but Amari is so precise, he gets right through it. He was jogging in those mountains in Nevada with Devin. Putting in those mouths. I like to imagine he'll be in shape to go eight rounds with no issues. As we mentioned, Mbumba certainly in shape, having fought 17 days ago, and also with a fight on the schedule for May 4th on his uh, promoter and boxing gym's 10th anniversary <laughs> card, No Limit Boxing. So obviously that's contingent upon what happens here tonight, but he's hoping to get back in the ring immediately. <laughs> I hate when I see that because that says opponent to me when I see that. I don't like that. Good activity there from Mbumba. Nice left hook to the body. Well, he's here to fight. <laughs> Definitely not another rope lesson. <laughs> Mbumba has an excellent left hook to the body. We saw him score a, a wicked body shot knockout over Roland Hammer in Germany back in 2022. And you saw him uncork that same shot. It's his main weapon, but he just ran, I think, into the lead foot of Amari Jones. And a little headbutt up. And when yeah, he was going a little down. bit of that. I'd love to see that replay. We'll get a chance to after this round, Brock. <laughs> it comes out of it. Lead uppercut there from Amari Jones a moment ago. See the versatility with that lead hand. Looking off the jab and finding his own left hook to the body is Amari Jones. Good way to close out round one. Yes, sir. Sharp. Eyes open, very alert. Amari Jones at this. All right, let's take a look at this replay, guys. Let's see what happened as Mbumba goes to the canvas. Okay, so it's not feet tangling. I think as Mbumba was going down, their heads clashed, and that put him down. He was ducking under, and their heads hit, and he fell. Yeah. Digam, pronto, então é um desse e um forno. Não, são dois fornos. São dois? Sim, dois verdes. Eu pago a minha. Eu pago a minha. Round 2 begins. Sim, são dois fornos. Sim, são dois fornos. Technically, in the super middleweight division, that being because Mbuba weighed in at 160.4. He did take this fight on three weeks notice. Like you said, Corey, in very good shape. But I don't think point four is going to make him fat. Okay, <laughs> just spraying us here ringside. Ah, I think Amari wants a, a stoppage by body, body shot. Yeah, he has been really leading in to those left hooks to the body. And, and listen, guys, fighters will never admit that this is the case, but it's certainly the case in the eyes of the fan base. Amari's probably looked at Mbumba's fight against Amo Williams, saw Amo knock Mbumba basically out of the ring, and he knows that there's going to be some comparisons, even though he's not on the same stage of his career as Amo Williams, there is that litmus test. Exactly. 
Nice counter to the body there from Jones. These guys, especially in the same divisions. Speaking of, Abel Williams switches to Southpaw. This is something that Jones can do. When he started boxing, he was just a conventional orthodox fighter. And then he started experimenting with the southpaw stance. And in his words, he started kind of modeling himself after Errol Spence a little bit. As an orthodox fighter, he started borrowing a little more from Roy Jones Jr. I think he's going to Terrence Crawford right here. A hard shot, but that one is way low. It was here, right here, borderline. I was saying, I, I think his, I think Amari's right hook is even more vicious than his left hook. Yeah, I, I agree. That's, that's, that's why stance. I mentioned go yeah. Terrence Crawford. Mumba not taking much of that allotted five-minute break. Roy Jones showing off his offensive arsenal as a southpaw. And that's a big key right there, guys. Sometimes when guys switch stances, yes. it's clear that their footwork isn't the same. Yes. I'm not seeing that really no. from Amari Jones. I don't no. see him laboring in the footwork department. Exactly. You still get the angles. You still get the same angles from Amari Jones because he can fight perfectly from both sides. It's a guy you can call a real switch hitter, right? Absolutely. There's only a handful of the sport today that, that you know you can say they come no, 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 on the top of that list. <laughs> Andre Durrell was on that list. Yeah. And this is another one. 100%. Yeah. 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 I mean, like you said, Ak, and Mumba's here to fight. Had a little one-two of his own, but that shot was a little low. <laughs> and Jones is contesting it a little bit. Nah, come on, it wasn't that low. It was on the, it was on the cup. Let's go in that corner, gentlemen. Round three underway as Amari Jones just goes ahead and starts the round as a southpaw. No switching necessary this time. And understandably so. He was doing some of his best work of the fight. Maybe his best work of the fight yes. as a lefty. I think the hardest shots, shots are coming from this stance. I actually like him better for the southpaw stance in this fight. It's back to orthodox. You know, sometimes when your your lead hand is your dominant hand, you know, you got a stronger jab, stronger left hook, kind of like Cotto, kind of like De La Hoya. Lumba doing some decent work here on the inside. You saw a left hook connect on the inside. There's another one. Mari Jones willing to engage in this. As he steps back, he lands a nice uppercut, and now goes to the body as well as Amari Jones really digs that left hook in. Bumbo complaining about back of the head shots, but he's, you know, he's bent over. Ripple left hook. Oh, and then a couple right hands, and Mbumba looks like he might be staggered right now as he grabs a hold. 10 knockouts out of his 11 wins. Oh, yeah, he, he wants to. Oh, nice fun. shot there from Mbumba. He is going down swinging if indeed he is going down. <laughs> For sure. Nice bounce back shot there from Mbumba. Yeah, I think he was dazed momentarily, but he got his composure. <laughs> Another good shot landed. We saw Mbumba take a lot of flush shots from Emma Williams in that fight. And certainly showed that overall he has a pretty sturdy chin. But at a certain point, when you're in there with a puncher and you're eating flush shots, uh, your body just gives way. Absolutely, and you go down. Nice sneaky uppercut by Jones. Yeah. 
He was the bigger man in this fight. For sure. Looks heavier handed. Oh. Excellent work on the inside there from Amari Jones. Landing to the body, pivoting. Good display of boxing here tonight by Jones. Gentlemen, we have five more rounds left of this. <laughs> How much can M Mboomba take? I mean, especially those body shots. Are you saying uh, you don't see this fight going in distance, Barack? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I just, I just can't see him taking those body shots too much longer. Can't say I disagree with you. <laughs> you know that doesn't happen often. Triple left hook by Marvy Jones, followed by a right uppercut and a right hook. Two right hooks. And this is where Mbumba was dazed. But he was able to hold on and regain his composure. Mbumba's a live dog, because that was that sneaky uppercut by him. Hold on. Well, in between rounds, uh, off camera, we just saw the referee go to Mbumba's oh. corner and probably thinking exactly what you guys are thinking. He asked, like, hey, does he want to continue? The, the corner shoved him off uh, pretty quickly, but obviously the official starting to see some of these patterns and starting to have some concern about the uh, dominance that Mbumba uh, is undergoing here from Amari Jones as round four begins. Uh, last round you pointed out the, the, the strength, the physicality of Amari Jones, especially on the inside, bumping Mboomba off. And remember, this is a guy who was a football player in high school who went to the boxing gym just to stay in shape and then realized, oh, I'm pretty good at this too. Right. Still signs of a, of a linebacker there. <laughs> Hard body shot, a right hook to the body there from Amari Jones, but credit to Mboomba, comes right back with a straight right hand. Brandon Adams body shot landed yesterday. If you haven't seen that one, Brandon Adams with the left hook to the body that had Ishmael Villarreal down for about five minutes or so. Body shots, yeah. Vicious, vicious body. Larry Jones looking for a highlight reel knockout of his own. Nice, crisp left hand there from Amari Jones. I can't see too much more of this, Corey, uh, going on. Not with all the people doing this. He's actually wearing that around his arm to commemorate a fallen police officer in New York City. Paying homage. What <laughs> hasn't been just the shots that have been landing that have been impressive and, and no doubt frustrating for Mbumba. It's not just the punishment he's taking, it's the way that Amari Jones is moving too. He's pivoting around him, he's spinning him, he's basically doing whatever he wants, with the exception of a few shots here and there from Mbumba that are enough to keep him in this fight. Right. Um, I think he's tailor-made. I think Mbumba is just tailor-made for Amari Jones because though he's taking a lot of shots, he only has one game plan, go forward. You're fighting a guy who knows how to answer that with a good jab and countering. I wonder what that back pocket is for in those leather trunks, Barack. <laughs> you keep talking about the trunks. Is that for your mouthpiece? <laughs> <laughs> right? What are you carrying into the ring? <laughs> About 10 seconds of round four as Amari Jones just continuing to pepper Armel and Boomba with shots. Triple left hook again. I got a feeling the doctor's going to head back to the corner again. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to take a close look at Mboomba. He's taking a lot of shots that round. 
रही है जीरो के This is an onslaught by Omar Jones in this round. Beautiful body shot right here by Omar Jones. Really like what I'm seeing from him overall. Ah, get ready, Mr. Chief. Ah, not too bad. Make a prediction that this fight ends in this round. And if it doesn't, it end probably by body shot. Time. Or the ref stopping it. Uh, the ringside physicians are going to have a look at Armand Mumba right now. What up, Joe? Welcome. All right, they will determine that Mbumba can continue. The fight will resume. Round five now underway. Amari Jones, utterly dominant here tonight at the Barclays Center against a, a tough and credible opponent. I, I think it's important to bring that context back, guys, because Amari Jones is making this look very easy. But this is a 10-1-1 fighter. This is a guy who, you know, had aspirations as a prospect himself not that long ago. People need to know that I'm glad you're pointing that out, Corey, because when a guy makes it look that easy, you know, the casual fan assumes that uh, you're fighting a soft touch, and that's not the case today. Amari's just that good right now. Again, doubling up on that right hook to the body. I love to see young men invest to the body as much as Amari Jones. Well, in addition to obviously being underneath the Devin Haney banner, he's been doing a lot of the things that Haney did to build his career, just going from camp to camp. And the guys like J-Rock Williams and Shane Mosley Jr. and Mario Barrios and Joshua Boazzi. Just testing himself in sparring against contenders when he was an even younger prospect learning on the job. That's a great lineup, and it's proven today. I see big things from Mario. He's really trying to get the stoppage right Beautiful now. counter there from Jones. That's Rolling underneath, stop. popping up with that right hand, now digging to the body on the inside. He's very comfortable with a line of fire. I was going to say, everything looks very casual yes. from Amari right now. Yeah. Yeah. And not in a bad way, yeah, no. by any means. Just Cav comfortable. It's comfortable. Cavalier. That's it. <laughs> but he does it with power. Guys, I don't think people are talking enough about Amari Jones as one of the hottest prospects in boxing, and I think we need to start changing that now. Oh. Amari said earlier on uh, this year that 160-pound division has been a little quiet for the last little while, but he intends to wake it up. Certainly well on his way to getting up there with some of the bigger names in the division over the next couple of years. I mean, when you have a tough fighter like Mbombo, just because he can take all of these shots, does that mean we should let him continue taking these shots? Great point, Barack. I mean, that, that's why we have these ringside positions to help make those decisions. <laughs> Beautiful left hook by Amari Jones, followed by another one, and two hard body shots. Mixing it up, straight jab, missed with the right hand, but came back with that left hook. Oh, beautiful up. Followed by a straight right. This is a methodical beatdown, and I'm just waiting for someone to say, okay, and boom, buzz had enough.
So quick check once again from the ringside physicians. Armel and Boomba back out there, oh, just getting oh, blasted oh. by a right hand from Amari Jones. Four, five, After a while, six, the shots, you just can't take it. You just can't keep taking the same shots. Well, if Amari Jones was hunting for a highlight reel knockout, he'll have a golden opportunity to find one right now. He is a wounded man in front of him and an eternity to work with here in the sixth round. And that is a compassionate stoppage. It's not the one maybe that Amari wanted for the Instagram reel, but it was probably the right decision, guys. 100% Corey. Great stoppage by a very experienced veteran referee. And, and no argument for Mboba. And no argument for me. Hey, Bishop Sports, we, we love folks. And we have to pay attention. So some compassion. It's absolutely. Well, if you haven't seen Amari Jones before, I'm sure that was quite the eye-opening performance as we take a look back at that knockdown. And here's how the stop. It was the counter right that did it. Boom. Grazed left foot. It's the shot that you're not really ready for that hurts the most. And that's what happened. Great pull back there. Pull, counter. Puts him down. And the ref was already thinking that he's taking too many shots already, so he gave him one more chance. Another dominant performance from uh, Amari Jones. Ready to make it official. Let's send it back off to Joe Martinez. Amari Jones approves to 12 and 0 with 11 knockouts, and he could not have made that much more impressive than he did. He couldn't have made it look much easier either, guys. And again, this is a very credible opponent he was in there with. This is a guy who was in there with Ammo Williams two fights ago, or literally earlier this year. Amari Jones just absolutely mauled him here tonight. Okay, so now the question is, this is his third eight-round bout. Is he ready for those 10 rounders? Is he ready to step it up, a former champion or something like that? I would say so. Looking forward to seeing Amari Jones back in the ring. And we are looking forward to this one. Juan Francisco Estrada and Bam Rodriguez. June 29th, Rock, I mean, you're just laughing at how good this fight, I mean, it's, it's an outrageously good fight, guys. If you're a boxing hardcore, uh, this is your Super Bowl. Yes, yes, Estrada's a legend, pound for pound type of guy, and then you just got Bam Bam is just, he's a future great Hall of Fame. All right, we are ready for our next contest here from the Barclays Center. Let's get it back up to Joe. Super lightweights make their way into the ring. First up from North Carolina, here is Marcus Bowes. Marcus Bowes makes his way to the ring. The 29-year-old from Roxboro, North Carolina, fought less than a month ago, dropping a four-round unanimous decision to Jeffrey Young in Barbersville, West Virginia. That was on March 23rd of this year. So when he got the call on relatively short notice to step in for this fight, he was ripped and ready. But he'll have a tough night ahead of him against Johnny Canyas. And the ring, back out of the red corner from Santa Ana, California, the 
So Johnny Kanya is one of the young prospects in the Golden Boy stable. A guy seemingly with a lot of natural talent. Only 13 amateur fights, but after just eight amateur wow, fights, hey, hey. he was already in the USA Elite Amateur big Tournament. So this is a guy who grew up quickly in the amateurs and is still in the hey, early stages of his pro mom. career. Todos os quinientos e está vindo o primeiro lugar. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears blue trunks trimmed in white and black. Weighing in at 140 pounds even, he enters the ring tonight for the eighth time as a professional from Roxboro, North Carolina. Here is Marcus Bowles! His opponent, fighting out of the red corner, wearing green trimmed in white. He weighed it officially 137 and one half pounds, and in three bouts, this young professional stands perfect with three victories. No defeats, two wins coming by way of knockout. Here's the undefeated super lightweight from Santana, California, Jonathan Sugarcane And your referee in charge of the action is Harvey Perez. All right, boxers, you received your instructions earlier. As a reminder, obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Touch them up. Good luck. A super lightweight action here between Johnny Kanyas and uh, Marcus Bowes, two guys who's Lives have drastically changed as a result of the sport of boxing. Kanyas was a union carpenter hanging drywall in Los Angeles. His dad was his boss. His 18th birthday was his first day on the job site. But as Beto Duran told us before the fight, he was watching Ryan Garcia, Luke Campbell one day, went back to his dad and said, I, I want to box. I, I don't think I want to do this anymore. That job might be there for me later, but I want to give it a go as a boxer. In terms of Marcus Bowes, it's important that we give light to programs like this, guys. He's a part of the Rumble in the Rocks program in Roxborough, a group aimed at combating gun violence through boxing participation. So two guys who have uh, drastically changed their lives as a result of the squared circle. I love how great our sport is. <laughs> and you know, Corey, you mentioned the, the very little fights that Kanya has, and I kind of like this new wave of fighters that aren't fighting tons of amateur fights and leaving some for the their pro career, not leaving it all in the amateurs. Marcus Bowes swinging wildly with that left hook a moment ago. He's certainly going for it here in the opening round. Please. Kanye looks so seasoned and you would think he had an extensive Please. amateur. Please. Yes, coming back uh, relatively quickly after that first round knockout win Somebody over Kamiko Hall on the Zerto Gulamirian undercard. Uh, wanted to be even more active this year. He was scheduled for uh, a couple Golden Boy undercards, but those fights fell through. Nice to see him back on a major undercard here tonight. What? I'm here. Good. He wants to fight five times this year if he can get them in. And if you keep scoring first round knockouts, uh, that's more and more possible. Hard left hook to the body there from Kanyas. Well, Bose has to give him something to work with <laughs> instead of just backing away. It's a young. He's throwing his shoulder more than he's throwing punches. I noticed that. There goes a little something there, Barack. A little overhead, right? Okay. Okay. Oh, getting too close and not getting the right distance. And that's why the jab is so important in this sport. I think that's also folks stepping in as well, going under and like stepping Overhand right from Kanyas a moment ago, grazed off the shoulder of Bose, but seemed to land in a glancing fashion. For the final 15 seconds of round one. 
Anya, Super Focus with Alexis Rocha, of course, key member of the Golden Boy Stable as well. Misses over the top with one final right hand. And that'll do it for round one. Nice shot from Bose right at the belt. Bose is literally walking directly to him with no head movement and no defense whatsoever. Right there, Bose was complaining about hitting him in the back of the head and protect yourself at all times. Lucky that those shots didn't land for us, but kind of us. Round two underway. Johnny Kanyas. You mentioned obviously his friendship with uh, Alexis Rocha, also trained by Hector Lopez at the TKO boxing gym in Santa Ana. So that means he's been in the ring with everyone from Rocha, of course, to Ronnie Rios, of course, Luis Neri, Raymond Murataya. Many others. And again, supplementing what was a truncated amateur career, just, just going a different path to learn this sport. Absolutely. More rounds in the gym, less in amateur tournaments. Yeah, but you wonder if a, a fighter is comfortable under the light. And I, I don't see okay. <laughs> Exactly. Hey, there's a, there's a fighter by the name of Tito Trinidad who didn't have an extensive amateur career. We, we all saw what he did. No, never heard of <laughs> I hear he's pretty popular around here. I mean, I just I heard that. Yeah, he's pretty, he's okay. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Shot there from Johnny Kanyas, Marcus Bose. Well, he didn't have a, a particularly yeah, yeah, long yeah, amateur yeah. career either. Only okay. scored his first amateur victory in August of 2021. Oh, no. Bose, <laughs> the next day. <laughs> it might be the very next day. Doesn't look like he, no. Oh, oh that's hard. Hard. Shot there from Kanyas. Bose has been under the light, so to speak, a couple times. He made a couple of television appearances to this point in 2022 against Charlie Sheehy on the ESPN. Pro Box against Mandeep Jagra. But unfortunately, he was stopped in both of those fights. So looking for a better result here tonight. Corey might have called all of those fights. He's everywhere. <laughs> Left hook there from Kanyas, <laughs> leaping in with that shot. Hard right hand over the top as well. <laughs> in the right distance to be able to land these body shots. He's doing it from too far. The right hand is landed, but the other shots not in the right position. He's walking in that one. Very, very low from Kanyas, and uh, the reaction from Marcus Bose, very understandable. Uh, you know, I, no acting in that. I'm going to be honest, Corey, you know, I've been hit with a cup before. More than not. Somebody hit you with a cup? <laughs> no, I, I fought 75 amateur fights, and I sparred hundreds of rounds. They, Sometimes it doesn't hurt as much in these fights as in the ring. I'm telling you, I'm being honest. No, that was low. That was low. That's when the cup rams into your your private parts, bro. That hurts. No, around it. Does it hit the actual part? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Red. Just, Come on. Good to go. Right, here we go. The Damn whole it. groin area hurts when it gets hit, no matter what. Look, you're a martial artist. You got kicked in. It's different, all right? <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. I'm going to fire it up after that low blow. Ace, ace. Oh, hard left hook from Kanyas. And Marcus Bose was on wobbly legs. I think holding on to Kanyas might have kept him up. But look at Bose still firing back here in the closing moments of round two. That left hook definitely shook up Bose. This was a 
great combination by Kanye's here. <laughs> right to the, where Ox says the cup. It doesn't hurt. That was almost his thigh. That was very, very low. Come on, Ox. That, that, that's the combination I was looking for. Two left hooks. The first left hook was very flush. Put bows on shaky legs. Stay there, stay there, stay there. You're right? Yeah. Okay. I'll be Doc making sure Bowes is okay to continue. <laughs> I mean, I got to say, credit to Marcus Bowes. He's not skipping leg day. Not only did he absorb that shot to the thigh and, and uh, you know, continue on with the fight, he had to basically do a pistol squat to stay up on his feet after that left hook. What a shot Man. from Johnny Kanyas. Running back legs. Good counter. Awkward style, jumping in with those shots. Yeah, and very wide with his shots as well. Lost five straight since starting his career 2-0. Oh. This be tough, starting 2-0 and oh, losing good, five good. straight. At what point do you say, okay? I think what happens then is you get more and more of these calls. Yeah. Tougher assignments, less notice. But Marcus Bowe is, again, one of those guys that will say yes to those calls. And Bills have to get paid, Corey. Well, and more than that, you know, we talked about this in a different context last night with Dakota Linger, but the sport of boxing doesn't function without fighters like this. Yes. Someone has to test prospects. Someone has to be on the other side. Someone has to take these risks. Right. Credit to Marcus Bowes for stepping in here tonight. Respect to the journeyman, especially the journeyman that does this. Yeah. Beautiful left hook. I mean, you know, don't just come down here to lay down. I mean, look, that's a great conversation, guys, because Corey's right. I mean, everybody is not going to be a prospect. <laughs> and everybody's not going to be, very few going to become world champions. Well, and in the case of Johnny Kanyas, again, we mentioned he's had a couple of fights already this year pulled because opponents dropped out. He was staring down the barrel of another one happening, and then in steps Marcus Bowes, who's giving him some quality rounds here. Respect. In other words, you fight fans need to respect these fighters. More so. Let him go, let him go, let him go. Hands free. Final minute here of round three as Tanas just misses that check left hook. Fellow by the name of Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. also became middleweight champion of the world, but I think about 15 amateur fights. How do you know these guys we've never heard of? Huh? <laughs> Where do you come with these guys from? I don't know. You guys I've seen fight here and there. Mentioned Alexis Rocha, the friend of Johnny Kanyas. It was Rocha who actually convinced Kanyas to come back to the boxing gym in addition to that inspiration after seeing Ryan Garcia. Of course, we'll see later on tonight in our main event. Oh, maybe we'll see a body shot. Uh, yeah, nice shot there. <laughs> I like, right I like Garcia Campbell, yes. huh? Funny, we were at that fight and worked that broadcast. As usual, Jonathan Kanya just stalking his opponent, lands him straight right, he gives him a left to the body, and Bose holds on and says, all right, listen, I had enough of Touch gloves. Come on out. We're gonna touch gloves. Go back. We got some mouthpiece. Here we go. Box. This. Fourth and final round between uh, Johnny Kanyas and uh, Marcus Bose. Here in the prelims ahead of Devin Haney and uh, Ryan Garcia as uh, Johnny Kanyas looking for his third consecutive knockout. And he might have Marcus Bose in a little bit of trouble right now. I really think it's what you said earlier. He has strong legs, Marcus Bose legs. And it's keeping him up because he just got hit with a flush right here and it should have went down. 
He's definitely in shape. I was expecting him to come out and just lay it all on the line in this last round. Guys like both, they just like to fight, Corey. They, they, they love being in the mix. We know that Bose can be vulnerable. We saw him knocked out in spectacular fashion by Charlie Sheehy. We mentioned that fight on ESPN in 2022. Bose again coming over the top of the right hand. Guys, uh, assessing the matchmaking here, too, I, I think this is a pretty sensible matchup for Johnny Kanyas at this stage in his career. It, it, granted, he's only faced fighters with a losing record to this point in, in his career, and, and Marcus Bose continues that trend. But with that truncated amateur career, uh, there's still something for him to learn in fights like this for a, a fighter of his experience. 22 years old, doesn't have crazy amount of experience. This is the steps you should take. Has very little experience, Barack, and this is a, a, a great learning session here tonight. I think that body shot just hurt Marcus Bowe there. A couple hit. of them might have. That one, the referee felt was a little bit low as Johnny Kanye is dealing with a little abrasion outside of his left eye. A the wall scar here tonight. Right-handed body there from Kanye, and he brings it up top. We're inside the final minute of this contest. Very good performance so far by the young lad. Oh, great call, right there. Sharp right hand from Kanyas. Guys, I'm really liking the way that Kanyas is throwing that left hook to the body. I'm liking the velocity on that shot right now. It's placed perfectly. There it is again. Nice work, great. Kanya's not even breathing hard. Good lead right hand. Oh, look at Marcus Bose again. Once in a while, one of those shots. Smacking Kanya's with that left hook. And you see the mark on Kanya's face. You'll know that he was in a fight here tonight. Did he win every round? Absolutely. But Marcus Bose gave him a good, honest day's work here tonight in Brooklyn. Well, coming up on Saturday, May 4th, it is a gigantic fight here on DAZN. It is the return of Canelo Alvarez. Canelo Alvarez. Ahí no me guía. Hola, hola. Mungia, live on the zone, May 4th. We're back live here at the Barclays Center. That's coming up, of course, on Saturday, May 4th. But we've got a mega fight coming up later on tonight. Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia. You see the QR code on your screen. You can scan that to order the pay-per-view here on the zone. Uh, pay-per-view portion of our broadcast will start at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. Still plenty of action on our prelims, though. Darius Fulgham will be in action coming up next. And then Sergei Derevyanchenko and Vaughn Alexander in the, so to speak, main event of our prelims. But right now, we're ready to make this fight official. Let's send it back up to Joe Martinez. <laughs> Johnny Kanya is here in Brooklyn, going the distance with Marcus Bowe, snapping that two-fight knockout streak. But good experience, guys. Again, he had Bowe's hurt a couple of times, but had to work 
through four rounds, got touched with a couple of shots as well. A, a good learning experience for Kanyas here. Especially for, for a kid that didn't have uh, many amateur fights, so he's learning on the job. And in particular, Barack, I think we like that left hook. You know, we saw, you know, maybe some similarities that you mentioned uh, to the way that Garcia, Ryan Garcia, threw that left hook to the body against Luke Campbell. We saw a, a similar approach in the way that he was throwing it here tonight. Absolutely. Different style, but this is what you do with this level of competition. You sharpen your tools, and that's what he did. He worked on every single punch in his tool shed. All right, well, we're ready for our uh, next contest. As mentioned, Darius Fulgham will be in action, another one of the uh, young stars of uh, the Golden Boy Stable tonight, taking on uh, Christian Olivas, one of the key trial horses that you tend to see on a Golden Boy cards. He's tested a lot of good names over the years, and tonight, Darius Fulgham will be on the other side of the ring. We're ready to meet the fighters. Send it back up to Joe Martinez. And fight fans, we are set to go on the next bout tonight. Eight rounds this scheduled in the super middleweight division. And first to make his way to the ring, fighting out of the blue corner from Tijuana, Mexico, Christian Olivas. <laughs> Well, as I just mentioned, uh, Christian Olivas, with a record of a 22 and 10. Mi compa? He's one of the go-to uh, fighters that Golden Boy and its matchmakers use to test fighters. He might as well be a part of the Golden Boy taxi squad. In fact, two fights ago, Olivas was upset by Rowdy Montgomery on the Nary Hovanitian undercard. Olivas was supposed to face Aaron Silva that night. Silva dropped out, but Golden Boy honored their contract with Olivas by giving him that fight anyway. He didn't come out on top, but again, Olivas always there to give contenders and prospects a good fight. And his opponent standing by to make his way to the red corner from Houston, Texas. Here is Darius Bolja. <laughs> So Darius Fulgham of Houston, Texas makes his way to the ring, 10-0, with nine knockouts last time out. Scored a 10-round majority decision over Alantes Fox. That was in January of this year. Fox obviously a nightmare style Still persevered and got the victory in that fight. A totally different look for him here tonight and more terrific exposure for a man that Gold Boy has high hopes for. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this bout is scheduled for a no. round, and it is for my, the my Continental my USA my. Super Middleweight Championship. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue, trimmed in gold. He weighed in 167 uh, and one half pounds. This 32 fight veteran holds a professional record standing at 22 victories, 10 defeats, 19 big wins coming by way of knockout. Here's the challenger from Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico, Christian Oliva. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks trimmed in orange and red. He weighed in 167 and one half pounds. In 10 bouts, he stands perfect with 10 victories. No defeats, nine wins coming by way of knockouts from Houston, Texas. Here is the reigning, defending, undefeated WBA Continental U.S. Super Middleweight Champion, destined for greatness. D Angel referee in charge of the action, Ricky Gonzalez. Gave you instructions in the dressing room. The good clean fight. Protect yourselves at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Touch them up. So 
We're ready to go with our next contest in the uh, Super Middleweight Division. As you heard, a regional title for the WBA also on the line. The WBA Continental USA Super Middleweight title. Of course, that means a little boost in the rankings for the winner of uh, this contest. Darius Fulger, DFG. One of the prize prospects in uh, the Golden Boy stable right now. And Fulgham with a really impressive backstory as well. He's a licensed nurse in Texas with a degree from Prairie View A&M. In fact, the entire Fulgham family, all of them have degrees from HBCUs. Really uh, one of the, uh, the better spoken fighters that you'll ever talk to. 100%. He yeah. right, cares about education. I, I'm willing to bet that even if he starts making a whole lot of money, he'll still keep his nursing job. <laughs> It's a good paying job. <laughs> Fulgham, a decorated amateur. He was ranked number one in the nation at heavyweight at one point. A national Golden Gloves winner. Winner at the 2020 U.S. Olympic team trials. Oh, some weight. I said I'm going down in the weight class. Smart move. Tell us about the bullying story. What happened? Good job. Yeah, six foot heavyweight or a six foot one heavyweight. That, that would fly in the 50s. Probably not now. Six, Coming up at six foot nine. Yeah. Tyson Fury. Now, six foot six one super yeah, middleweight sounds really yeah. good. <laughs> Just don't tell Andy Yeah. That's something. For some reason, a couple of people, you know, they're trying to make a name for themselves out there. So this one, 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 I don't think a statement needs to be made today. Oh, nice. Short uppercut there from Fulgham. Well, to your point, I, I think after that Alantes Fox, and again, it's a good victory. You have to deal with a lot when you're in there against Alantes Fox. Very few people look good against the Fox brothers, but I'm sure for Fulgham, he wants to kind of erase the memory of what was in some ways a frustrating night. Well, and look, as you know, as good as the last fight, so in boxing, people will forget. <laughs> I think that was a good name, and I think I think it should have been scored a unanimous decision and not a majority draw. But it is what it is. It's sneaky up as your best name. This is the first round, so let's give Fulgham some time to get into a rhythm. Because he knows that a nice one, too. Absolutely. This is what I call ring reconnaissance. You know, you just surveying your opponent. You see him what works. And then you would put your shoes on as you're walking up to the school doors. Nice little furry outfit by Fulgham today. As I'm observing everybody's fashion sense today. No opposition from the commission on that one. Fur allowed. Tassels, not. The back pockets also allowed. <laughs> That'll do it for round one. Holds him touching. Olivia else with his jab. Like I said, ring reconnaissance. Short uppercut there, counter. And just controlling the, the pace with the jab. And he was like, one day, I wasn't feeling good. I went to the dinner, and she said, okay, um, that you're going to go home. So I got up and I went home. Round and two begins. Darius Fulgham and uh, Christian that's Olivas. Like, that's a big no-no, apparently. Eight rounds in the 168-pound division. So I didn't see it, like, before I got there. I stopped, and I was like, you're still never going to go home. had a couple of years off the sport and a couple of years back after his fight against Shane Mosley Jr. And he again okay, stepped in on short notice, stepped in for Jason Quigley to face Shane Mosley Jr. He was stopped in five rounds and he suffered a lot of damage to his right eye in that fight, nerve damage that made him think he might not ever fight again. So even being in here 
and being as durable as he is, is uh, <laughs> maybe a medical miracle, guys. <laughs> Something that uh, Darius Fulgham would, uh, would probably uh, be, <laughs> be very impressed with. <laughs> He'll be able to nurse him after the week. <laughs> I think he's giving him a pretty good checkup right now. <laughs> Nice left hook to the body there from Fulgham, who once described his style as wear and tear, just breaking my opponent down. Yeah, Fulgham feels bad because he's a nurse and he's seen <laughs> some damaged patients. It's a good point. How do you turn that empathy off when you go in the ring as a medical professional? Well, he's certainly doing it right now as he rips another left hook to the body. Something pushy and fun and shiny. Like, yeah. put his nurse well, hat back on. <laughs> um, I will describe it. Oh, yeah. That's a little thing. There's some chants in the crowd here at Barclays Center, which is starting to fill up. Some chants in DFG. I mean, it's has a, a nice fan base in Texas. Oh, the crowd was huge in Texas in one of his last fights. Oh, oh the attendance. Absolutely. And the right hand and body there from Fulgham, right along the belt line. Yeah, leave us saying he's being pushed down. I mean, he, he has to be careful of that instant guy. There was a, a shot to the body that landed with love touched the ground. Had the official seen it a different, I'm, I'm not saying it should have been a knockdown, I'm saying an official in a different position could see that the wrong way. Oh. Nice shot there from Olivas. Pops up with a nice left hook. Full jump just rocks his head back with a straight right hand. So he's, he's not, full jump is not loading up with the shots. They come up from right here. Short distance. That, that's a good straight right He's posting with that left hand, lining him up with the right hand. Extra zip on these shots from DFG right now. As he places one more right hand to the body. That'll do it for round two. Sometimes you gotta let an opponent get a little confidence, maybe get a shot off so you can help him up the media exchange to the land the shot. One, two, one from Fulgham, pushes him up against the ropes. Fulgham's in total control of this fight here. But Olivas is not. Hey, it's mortal in it, bro. Out with punches of his own. Beautiful double jab right hand by Fulgham. And the referee is just tired of Fulgham always pushing Olivas down. Round three begins. We'll see if Darius Fulgham can pick up where he left off at the end of round two. He really started to physically dominate a Christian Olivas in that round. And guys, we mentioned Fulgham fighting at heavyweight in the amateurs and working his way back down. And you see this pattern sometimes. You think of guys that have been really physically strong and dominant. Guys like Better B have fought at a, a heavier weight in the amateurs. Sean Porter fought at a heavier weight. They, they get into the pros and work their way down through camps, but they maintain that, that same frame and that same physicality that they had when they were a larger fighter. It's a good point. You know, they're used to having to deal with heavier guys. You know? It's almost like muscle memory. Mm -hmm. and, and usually they're strong when they get into these weight classes that they now. Yeah, Sean Porter was an excellent example because he fought and beat Usyk in the amateur. And if you think about it, he was barely hurt in his career until his last fight. Well, if you want to hear more from Sean Porter, he'll be on the pay-per-view broadcast a little bit later on. And to do so, you can order on his own pay-per-view. Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia coming up later on. That pay-per-view broadcast starts at 8 o'clock p.m. I see what you're saying. Uh, uh, full jump shots. He's not sitting down on them. Those are arm punches. And uh, I would, I would think that he's under the pressure that, you know, he, he has to get this guy out of here if he wants to be compared. Like you said earlier, Corey, these guys compare themselves to other fighters and what you did against common opponents. 
Yeah, the shoulders are squared up, and it's just all He's not hurting the waist. Like, that was a good left hook being turned. Well, even the point is going, guys, we have Eva, who's a double tough guy, and looking very Just leave me alone. The body language is not positive from Olivas, and more than that, you can see swelling in and around both eyes, and we mentioned the issues that he's had, serious problems, nerve damage in the face, and even with what Fulgham is doing right now, maybe not sitting down on all these shots, he's still busting this guy up. And, 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 look, let's give him credit, he has nine knockouts out of his 10 wins, so obviously he's a heavy hitter, not having to hold up. Whatever he's doing, it's working. Yeah, some guys just have natural power. It's like the uh, the pitcher that can throw 100 but can casually just throw 95. You know, you're, some people just have special power. Yeah. I agree. Oh. Shot there from Fulgham, just a sweeping right hand. Pivots gets out of the way, now back on the inside and doing damage to the body. I think it's time for the ref to start yeah, wondering if Olivas is taking too many shots. Yeah, I did not like Thank the you. look of that offensive offering from Christian Olivas a moment ago. Looking a little bit unsteady right now. We head back into the corners. Fulton unloaded with hooks and uppercuts. I believe this round is when Olivas really started to feel it. Hey, my friend. Stays in the corner the whole break. And a rhythm will see how it continues. Doctors taking a close look at that. And Christian Olivas as well. It's strange to say, but somewhat quietly just doing a lot of damage here. Hey, Devin Haney here. Two division, four champ. Up next is the fight of the year. Me 
knocking out Ryan Garcia. My quest for greatness never stops. He's coming up next. He's live on his own. Once again at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time is the start of our pay-per-view telecast. Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia, you see the QR code on your screen. Get your camera out, scan that, and join us at 8 o'clock p.m. But right now, we're ready to make Darius Fulcham's 10th career knockout official as we send it back up to Joe Martinez. So Darius Fulgham cruises to victory here tonight, getting the stoppage win over uh, Christian Olivas. He made it look easy, guys, and you know, these are still learning fights for uh, Darius Fulgham, and even though he didn't really have to throw his hardest stuff in this fight, I mean, perhaps the game plan was, hey, go in there and place your shots and worry about speed more than power. I, I, I'm just getting it. It worked. <laughs> if, if it was, it worked. <laughs> Maybe so, but like, uh, we were talking about this in the game earlier, you want to go in there and not fight to the level of your opponent, you know, you want to do your best in every, in every, um, fight. And I, I, though it was effective, I think it could be done. There is Fulcher on the main to end of the win column. And Fulcher, as we mentioned, a very impressive young man outside the ring as well. And he'll have plenty of opportunities because of that backstory, the ability to market himself, the ability to speak as well. Fulcher, a guy that we're definitely excited to see more of. Guys, of course, our main event coming up a little bit later on is Haiti, it's Garcia. There's been a lot of talk about what's been happening outside of the ring, the build up to this fight. Which, frankly, one of the more memorable uh, in recent years, I would say, when it comes to major fights. But inside the ring, this is still a fascinating style matchup, I think. Absolutely, because you, you're thinking about a lot of people are thinking about Devin Haney's last performance against Richard Strickland. He's a certain type of fighter, not a lot of foot movement, short arms, not as fast as Ryan Garcia and Twitch. So I think though he looks dominant, he's fighting a different type of fighter than Ryan Garcia. So it's going to be a lot more competitive than the odds are showing. I think it's like what you said earlier, you know, because of the antics, are take, the antics are just taken away from what we actually have here. We have two of the best 140-pound fighters, and they're both coming off of great performances. Everybody's forgetting that because of some of the tweets that Ryan Garcia is doing. A little bit more than some tweets on right. <laughs> Instagram. Nevertheless, you're right. He's coming off a knockout victory, and Devin Coleman off a, coming off a dominant performance. I wouldn't say people have forgotten about the tank fight, but obviously he moved up in weight. He's a lot more comfortable at 140, though he didn't make 140 in this one. Maybe, as I alluded to it earlier, maybe that's part of the strategy for him to come a lot heavier than Devin in there and be the stronger guy. 100% part of the strategy, but does that look like your professional? You know, it's a bad look, but he's saying, I want to be comfortable. Well, you got to scan that QR code if you want to find out what's going to happen. It's at the top left of your screen. That's our main card starting at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. But we've got one more fight on the prelims, and it could be an exciting one, guys, between Sergei Derivinchenko literally coming off of the fight of the year against Jaime Munguia taking on Yvonne Alexander. We're ready to meet the fighters. Let's send it back up to Joe. Thank you. 
Thank you for your time. 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 Thank you fitting tribute here at the Barclays Center, and we actually have a, a few more moments before our uh, next contest between Sergei Derevyanchenko so and Vaughn Alexander. So let's talk so about it, guys. Derevyanchenko, a guy, as we mentioned, who so off the fight of the year as voted on by many outlets against Jaime Munguia, a fight that I was honored to call and, and of course, be ringside for. Derevyanchenko is just one of the ultimate hard luck cases. When you look at the Munguia fight, the Triple G fight, he's a guy who Getting these big fights and just heartbreaking decisions not going his way for one reason or another. And now the question is, is there enough time for Derry Vinchenko to reach the goals that he's been so painfully close to? I didn't have that Daniel Jacob fight. Sure. Yeah, it was a very close fight, yeah. though I thought yeah. maybe Danny pulled it off. I, I think he's the type of guy that you can't count out, especially for what we saw against Mugia. But to, to your point, is it too much? Has it been in too many wars? I guess we'll find out. I think he has to focus on not losing focus because hard luck because he is knocked down. It's always a knockdown. There's a reason why he loses the fight. Literally, he wouldn't have won the fight against Mugi if it wasn't for the 12-round knockdown. And in the Triple G fight and Jacob fight, he gets knocked down in the first round. So tough, tough fights with top, top opposition, but he keeps coming up short. Well, it is, it, it's heartbreak in even more painful ways. Think about that Mugi fight. Remember that there were negotiations to make that a 10-round fight. Gary Vincenco said, no, I want it to be a 12-round fight. That's what I signed for. I trained for 12 rounds. That knockdown went into cup. The 12th round, had that been a 10-round fight, Gary Vincenco, uh, if memory serves, either wins the fight or walks away with the draw, with the draw right? It might be five Canelo. It may fall instead of me. So Gary Vincenco taking on a Vaughn Alexander in this fight. A guy who's uh, been around the block. Again, one of these guys who tests everyone, always extremely durable. Uh, a guy who had a contract with Don King in like the early 2000s, uh, and now still active and in a fight against Sergey Derevyanchenko uh, coming up in just a few moments as we wait for those two fighters. But, but right now, we're going to take a look at the last two performances from both Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia as we get ready for our main event. Later on. Here, guys, I mean, this was just an absolute masterclass. Devin Haney against Pedro's Pro Bray. Not often are you going to see really a dismantling of an elite level fighter quite like this. I think the biggest mistake was Regis Pro Bray went into that fight saying, I can box just as good as Devin. But hardly anybody on this planet can box as good as Devin. I think most thought that the fight would be a bit more competitive. That's why it stood out. That's why it, the, the dominance was highlighted because we thought we just were in the right. But I guess that leads to how great Devin really is. Well, and in the midst of everything that's been going on during this fight promotion, uh, Barack, you mentioned, Ron Garcia coming off an impressive victory last time out against Oscar Duarte. As we take a look at some of those highlights as well. Uh, Garcia showing some adjustments. There, there was a period of time in that fight when you were probably thinking, why is he shoulder rolling fight like this? old two-toned circus poster, complete with a giant circus tent right in the middle. And this isn't the first time Steel Wool has offered us hints that circuses might be important to this franchise. There's the mini games in Hell 22, like the Carousel and Plaza Blast. There's the circus costumes that are down in the basement of Ruin. There's even circus-themed Funko merch. Clearly, Steel Wool is beating us over the head with this circus thing for a reason. But why? Well, back in 2022, in the build-up to Security Breach's Xbox Wall, Steel Wool did an interview with Game Job to talk about how they made Security Breach, give some updates on Ruins development and drop some little hints towards what might be planning down the pipeline for them franchise. And when asked what kind of game they'd like to make in the future, they said this. One thing that I would I would, would love to do is get back to kind of like the origin of like Fazbear Entertainment kind of yeah. how things were made. Same here. I'd like to head further back into the 70s. They want to create a game about the origins of Freddy's set in the 70s. Most of us at the time assumed this would just be Fred Bear's family dying, but with all this circus in the it begs the question, what if Fred Bear's family dying wasn't of Freddy's. What if it's set here of this circus? 
all the best 1970. And once I realized that, things started to fall into place. This poster is the key to clarifying some massive holes in the left timeline. It confirms a number of things we've been predicting for a while, and it shines a little more light on the franchise's latest villain. Come kind of think of it, maybe this isn't such a small theory after all. What? So, you better grab your popcorn theorist because the show is about to begin and I'm going to reveal to you the true origins of Freddy's. But, just before we get into that, I need to talk to you about something else that's really important. It's something you may have seen if you watch our own sister location, Style Theory. But we have an exciting theorist event coming up. We are putting on a fashion show. It's called Creators in Fashion and it is the first event. Kind. Not just because a fashion show has never been done on YouTube before, although that is pretty cool, but because we're getting weird with it. How weird? Well, the first only to be the you heard that right. We have enough games, enough movie, a cookbook, and then our plan is completing the theorist gauntlet and getting up and runway. Although, if you've ever bought our high quality NAP version and being high tension, may not be that surprising. But what might be surprising is what creators we have planned for the event. It's called Creators in Fashion, after all. So, we wanted to make sure we were spotlighting creators from all corners of the internet and make this one of a kind event even more special. We've got the likes of CHC, Seek Discomfort, Cast Toad, and Critical Role all getting lined up to strut their stuff. We will provide an for the event, and the whole thing is going to be commentated by the Santa Pansy version of the division that talk is... about Star Power. But of course, we couldn't do a fashion show by theorists without some weird little theorist antics going on. Besides the FNAF runway, we've also got dogs walking the runway. And no, I'm not just talking about something. I mean, literally dogs strutting up and down. And I'm not lying to you when I say they look both adorable and fierce. Speaking of fierce, we've also got our amazingly talented host of Star Theory, Amy Lee, Centre Stage, and co host of event alongside the man. That I know. That's right. Come back to host this very, very special event and celebrate the traditional man like a saint. She needs to take a single look at slime. Who knows? Get out and watch the street to find out. So mark your calendars for April 25th at 2.30 pm PST. We're going to be going live right here on Game Theory. So if you aren't already, make sure to subscribe because believe me, you do not want to miss this. Amy has a lot more surprises for you guys up those lakes and sleep. So remember, that's April 25th at 2.30 pm PST. Right here on Game Theory. I'll see you there. For now, let's get off the runway and head back to the surface. Now, I understand there may be some hesitancy in me changing up the entire beginning of the timeline. Again, it's a pretty big play. And while there have been a number of these new surfaces throughout the game's books, it doesn't necessarily mean that's what it's a good start. So, let's take a look at one of the recent examples of the surface from the internet so I can show you where I'm coming from. In the basement of the Blue DLC from the front there are two possibilities coming up. An old lady blackbird and an elephant dressed as a plant. In the game five, there's also a lion wearing a glasses and there are three animals worn associated with the surface. An elephant is also a trick sign for the game made by lion takers. The elephant is literally dressed as a clown who doesn't get caught surfacing in that, but most of all, Puff isn't actually their same as Thief. It's the fact they are in the majority of suits. In our initial theory on the room, it talks about how this costume seems to be related to surface making because, you know, the surface. However, the surface making does take the rent of all the other surface making pizza buttons to the shape of the room. why does Fazbear agree to purchase? Because they want him to make the robotics numbers. Specifically, they want him to turn them out of costumes into full blown animatronics. We've seen him do exactly this with Chica in the first movie of the store. Later on, he goes on to explain that this is an empty power of the 
Times can create describing the collection at spot to surface like the rain and the more other character costumes. So to surface, we believe for a long time that Edwin in the books of Paradise the animatronic genius that comes from a fast day that took certain small costumes to see the base of a fluid like he came from that time period of the period where Edwin was transforming costumes and these costumes aren't Edwin's only connections to the surface either. When Shark goes back to her childhood home in the Silver Eyes, she looks through Finley's office and finds a sort of books that have to be seen in records. Anyone who didn't know them, there were books on biology and NASA. Some on human beings, others on animals. There were books about the history of the traveling carnival and of the circus. There were books okay, about the animal development, about beasts of legends, about sewing patterns and techniques. Right there we're were volumes that claim to be about tricks to dogs, about boxing beats, about football cheering squads, Mascots. Most of these make a lot of sense. Here we go with the uh, main event, so to speak, of our uh, prelim uh, broadcast, Sergei Derry Bacheco. The books about child development, world either tie into the back of the speech of the kids, so try and figure out how the best service has to lose all in the super middleweight division. A division that, uh, but recently Derry Vyachenko said he wasn't even all the way comfortable at, but seemingly seeing, as we talked about, some of those dollar signs in the 160-pound division, some of those names that are there. Still plenty of opportunities out there for Derry Vyachenko, provided he can stay in the win column here tonight. Right, he's a fashion police guy. Oh. I've never seen sneaker suits right there. I know it. Sneakers or boots. <laughs> I think what happens is Vaughn yeah, Alexander forgot to change well, into his like boxer okay, sneakers. Those are sneakers he wore to the arena. Those, those don't even look good for lateral movement. We're going to see him like stumbling. I like the Jordan fight. I love Floyd Mayweather. Alexander touching Garavichenko to the body there a moment ago. The question for Alexander is is can he still be as durable you know, as we you know, know him to be for the vast majority of his career? Like a couple of fights ago, he saw him stopped by a body shot against Ian Green, Green, and there was a point in Alexander's career where it seemed like he was impervious to body shots. He could just shell up, he could rip him to the body, he wasn't going anywhere. Right. Is it possible that Father Time has finally caught up with him at the age of 38? I think Father Time has kept him a little bit of his resistance, because he definitely, definitely was a tough guy. He barely ever stopped, you know, but and, and you're in there with a tough guy as well that hurt Triple G to the body. You know, so it's going to be a tough night for him. But you and I Brady talked about this uh, the other night. I, I don't know that anyone's had Triple G that hurt. Even Canelo, with all never. due respect well, to Canelo, well, no Gary Vichenko had Triple G more hurt and in more trouble well, than anyone else well, ever has. Visibly hurt against Devin Vichenko to the body. It was a body shot. Yes. Never, we've yet to see Triple G hurt today. There is a version of Fun Fun Foxy with him. And that's it. Like, well, a game that came out before Sister Lopez. Still a little dry. It doesn't have uh, any of the fun time. hasn't broken a sweat yet. Implying, fun time Foxy didn't originally belong with that group of us. Okay, we don't know what was going on behind the curtain, but we do know there was a little bit of a delay on the ring walk, so it's possible that these two were kind of rushing to get ready and get into the ring. It could be I'm telling you what it is. He forgot his sneakers, <laughs> and that's why he's wearing these sneakers. We'll find out later. I mean, it's a good one, too, by the first The toy animatronics here feel wrong. The toy have become a thing since 1987 with their special recognition software and new form of the endo scan. Seconds of uh, the opening the round. Original frame Somewhat of slow start from Derry Vichenko and Von well, Alexander, but prior right to the Mangia fight, Derry Vichenko's trainer Andre Rozier was joking that he'd have a teaser in his back pocket to make sure that Derry Vichenko didn't start too hot, didn't gas himself out. So perhaps that's a part of the evolution, even at this stage in his career, of Sergey Derry Vichenko just taking his time in round one. Definitely the original four were all in existence as costumes before their introduction as animatronics at Brady Fazbear's Pizza. And what's even crazier is the designs of those costumes. Should we exist? A few years ago, there was a, let's just say, commercial that was by an official black artist that dropped an image onto the black subreddit with zero context or explanation. The only thing we knew is that these images contained Scott's official copyright. These images were commissioned by Scott. So, the principal's good piece of evidence is that, and what are these images of? But where did you want to start? Oh, well, I didn't serve. But if your spouse, parent, or grandparents served in the military, you could join USA. You can have a great grandpa day. So I'm already in. I was talking about your serve. Oh, he was saying for the military. <laughs> 
Two underway. Ten rounds in the super middleweight division. Large proportions of big round heads. Stay in the win column and perhaps set up some potential big fights. So we'll still be on the table for him at 168. But at 160, says he still believes he can get back down there. Just like big red noses or cheeks being used by clowns and stuff. I believe um I believe he'd be a competitor in any way. But I believe 160 is probably best for him. Because of his and height, you know, we're looking at two 38-year-olds, but Jody Chico got a lot more left in his tank compared to Juan Alexander. Sam 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 Sam
Set. Here now, in so uh, round three, and uh, uh, Hawk, I think that, that was a good assessment you made it to last round. It looks like the key piece that Derek and Jekyll had in the opening two rounds. It looks like a guy who wants to get out of the round. He's working on things, as you mentioned. You guys see the difference between this and the one we see is maybe showing 38 years old and maybe been in a few too many wars. That's the other possibility in terms of what we're seeing, right? But I think it's early. This and we'll see, you know, once we get round five, round six, if Derek Vincenco is still looking the way they did in round one, I think maybe you start asking those questions. Um, that's, a, that's, a good, that's a very good question. I, I can't be sure, but I think I'm looking at this more like how Fulgham did in his fight, you know, where he had somebody in front of him who wasn't a threat. You know, so he didn't get his own. Let's just peppering Von Alexander with great hands. Punches here. I said, oh, it's so hard. I said, Alexander says, hey, it's nothing. He's eating those. He's used to having a good chin, you know, so he's used to walking forward and still getting hit by big shots. And, and hey, don't get me wrong. I'm saying the 3 year old version of Derek Chico, but that's so a dangerous fighter. <laughs> Absolutely. The footwork right here from uh, Darren Vincenco, just masterful stuff. Nick there on his nose. I'm not sure if that came from a shot or a head, but this guy's been punching. Nice little yeah, hook. Yeah, that shot got Darren Vincenco's attention. Some short uppercut from Avon Alexander. Got some excitement out of Alexander's heart for a moment ago as well. Little James Tony stance there. His hands. You know, the pressure of Vaughn Alexander is making Devrachenko work a little bit more. And maybe he's thinking he can tie him up. Maybe that's his strategy. Devrachenko is strong late in fights. So that might not be the best strategy. Once a guy like Devrachenko. This is we tend to see. And Derek Vinchenko fight that scar tissue seems to have opened up once more. As you pointed out, Ock, dribble of blood coming off the bridge of the nose. Derek Vinchenko right now as he pauses away. You've got to grab your pop there. Right hand over the shot. A nice shot on Von Alexander. Boxing. The Andre Wozier. School of boxing. But we have this fighting theories of men. We are for them. It's called creators in fashion. And this is the first time. Not just because of fashion shows have never been done on YouTube. See, there were take a taste of the crafts. Because we had to really work in that crowd. The pressure was on. The way of the life is going to be. You heard that right, we had the game, the past, the movie, the book, and now that is complete, the nearest one there to getting a front line. Not landing completely flush, but like I said, it's scoring shots. But what might be surprising is what creates the event, who creates the fashion after all. So we wanted to make sure people spotlight the creators from all corners of the internet and make this one of a kind event. Round four begins. Sergey Derek and Chenko and Von Alexander. here on the prelim portion of tonight's broadcast. The prelim portion broadcast begins at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time before it's concluding. And our main event between Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia. Excellent job work by Derek Vincenco. To the bottom and to the top. That's right, man. Out of back to host this very, very special event. And so we're going to be back to the top. Yeah. What type of performance will we need from Dervichenko in order for him to get maybe another big shot out of the big fight? I mean, I think for Dervichenko, just winning is probably enough because there are so many of those names that we brought up at 168 pounds. You know, whether it's, it's Olenka, whether it's Benavidez, whether it's Christian and Billy, guys, there are so many young, somewhat untested names that are looking for a guy like Dervichenko to bolster to the resume. Right, exactly, because he has a name. Because of his resume already, he has a name. Tough fights, 
Charlo was the only one that really beat him convincingly. And if they're looking at Devonchenko now and saying, well, maybe you're right, I, maybe it is, you know, 38-year-old Devonchenko legs. You know, so I'm going to put that name on my razor. Like, like Charlo just mentioned Berlanga, and I know we got the key comedy issue here in management, but I like that fight. It's a good test. It almost looks like Alexander's getting stronger, you know? He's taking Devon Chaco's shots, and I think what's missing is that Devon Chaco needs to go more to the bottom. So, um, I would say he's getting stronger, he's more comfortable taking those shots as he's walking towards them. He's still moving. Keep your hands up. We've seen him take that condition to cheat that condition. Last time we saw Alexander stop, it was a body shot from Ian Green. Great, it's driving three fights ago. What's the sadness like the rain? Oh, that's your shake. Him with that jab, Vaughn Alexander still there bringing the fight, still standing right in front of him. This is what I was talking about. Like, the aggressiveness of Alexander in that round. Those are two really good shots. Before Derrick Tango turned it over. Round five underway. Vaughn Alexander bringing the pressure here to kick off the round. Back in 2022, went the 10 round distance with Christian and Billy, who right now I think a lot of people regard as one of the most dangerous super middleweights in the world today. Certainly uh, one of the most TV friendly fighters, uh, regardless of weight class right now. And at that point in his career, and Billy was just steamrolling through everyone. And it was a matchup against Vaughn Alexander that finally was able to give him some quality rounds against the Americans. Right. A very heavy puncher. Maybe not the most skillful. I would have loved to see him against uh, David Benavidez. I'm surprised I you haven't said anything about the ref's shoes. I don't think they like this. This is going bowling directly after this. Good, good, good work by Derby Jenko. Stay in busy. Matt did manage to notice a very interesting detail. Look at this line. This is what Derry Vincenco just continues to be so good at. Just methodically chopping you down. They're short shots. They look like they're not much, but there's so many of them. And they're so constant from so many different angles. Chipping away and then really cranking it up like that. Can he maintain that? <laughs> can he maintain that for five more rounds against a guy who was showing that he can take a shot? Let, let, That's why I say go to the body. Let's think about his last four or five fights. Can he maintain that? He gets stronger as the fight goes. Goes usually. You know, it's the second time you're right tonight. <laughs> I'm the second time in your life. <laughs> I don't see Sergey fading. I'm sorry. Oh. Beautiful shot there from Derry Vinchenko and another right hand immediately behind it. Oh, nice on the inside there for Vaughn Alexander. 
That one might have got Derry Vincenco's attention. It certainly excited the Alexander corner, but back comes Derry Vincenco. But Derry Vincenco just cannot be in a boring fight. He's impervious to come in. Oh, look at that shot from Derry Vincenco. Sweeping left hook. And Ron Alexander just walks right through it. Good reason. Let's not take credit from Vaughn Alexander. It's his face that's giving us this. Body shot there from Alexander. You're right. Dangerous shot from Alexander. Scoring right before the bell. Well, it sure is on by Alexander, but <laughs> Devin Chico came back with a beautiful combination. Keeping outside has clean hearing. Right, right to Alexander's chin, but he not already. Like it well. That one slid off the shoulder, Alexander, but that jab and right cross landed. And Alexander shakes his head, nope, none of these are affecting me. So the guy already bought the flight, or the fight, but he's asking for like donations, that's it. People want to donate to keep like the Discord server. People do it all the time. Once again, he is shots from Sergey Yarevichenko, but again, every once in a while, comes back with shots like that. There was an uppercut to the body at the end of last round, and then he opens this round with that leaping left hook. Why did both of these performers need it? Necessary. the has admitted, in, in his words, everyone is big for me at 168 pounds. Yes. He is very undersized for this division. Again, going back to how you get Derivichenko's skill is, I mean, usually when you see guys that are physically undersized for a division, they're built like Derivichenko, they're kind of that like bob and weave, pugnacious pressure fighter. Derivichenko has those greedy elements, but he also has you know, the Ukrainian schooling footwork, and he's dancing around guys at this weight class. But because of that size differential, he also gets touched out a little bit. Exactly. And I'm wondering if he can, you know, let his hands go the way he's doing. He's landing a lot of shots. He's looking clean, but he's also moving, just like Samaria, Chico G, Canelo won. You know, the Canelo was landing good shots, but he was moving in by the fifth or sixth round. He's tied. Vincenco just missing over the top of that right hand. Because now, you know, Vincenco is not sitting down with his shots. You know, he's, he's doing arm punches. Because he has to punch so much. Logan can't be hard. He's made up his mind that this is a strategy. And he'll rip if he has an opportunity to. But I think, you know, Corey mentioned earlier, I said that every once in a while, he'll land the big shot to the rip. He's right there. There's that right hand. Alexander, but just getting peppered again and again. So Derry Vincenco, and, and he gets guys who aren't as durable as Vaughn Alexander. Six rounds of this might have them bleeding, might have them cut. Vaughn Alexander, you just, you, could, you can't hurt this guy. The rock might be right up. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, pay attention. Pay attention. This guy is walking him down. He's letting his hands go a little bit more, Alexander. I think Derry Vincenco is finding it hard to keep him off. He's literally stuck. 
I think if Bowen let his hands go, he would be very, very dangerous right now. Combination there from Derek Vincenco. Ron Alexander just yells at his face. Just eats it. He talks to him.
Round eight begins. Someone here, Vincenco Amon Alexander, who takes a spill there. Yeah, I know. I was surprised to tell you about those sneakers. No, no, no. You take a two round of these. Sometimes it's Alexander, a really remarkable comeback story, going back after spending 11 years in prison, returning after a 12-year layoff. These guys, to put it into perspective, the era in which Alexander's pro career started, he made his debut on the undercard of Corey Spinks' first defense of his unified welterweight title against Zab Jude. He also appeared on the undercard of Roy Jones, Antonio Tarver II, and Felix Trinidad, Ricardo Mayorga at Madison Square Garden. This is a man who's been around a long time. He just took it way back. Way back. That's a totally different era. Hey, I have to. So we're we looking at a fresh 38. <laughs> 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 yeah, break. So that's why you can endure the shots that you see the best. Fuck, I will check that. And that's that signature Alexander Chen. Like whoever's doing strength and conditioning for Sergei, well, kudos to them. The man is still in shape at this age. Yeah. Round eight from a guy who is stalking him down the stop. Wait, who's doing strength and conditioning for Von Alexander? I'd like to hear that too. I know he was in those, uh, those tough Kevin Cunningham camps for uh, many, many years. I need to eat a guy so I can try to get a six pack, all right? <laughs> Your best bet is just a hard body shot there from Von Alexander. Sorry to cut you off there, bro. Oh, beautiful combination from Derevichenko. The intensity picking up here in round eight with less than a minute left to go. Barack, is your answer? Is Derevichenko fading? No. Definitely not. Once again, it's the point. The beat's place. But also, Alexander's not a two minute shot. Like, it's been probably 30 seconds since he's done a shot. He's just putting his head on him. I mean, look, we talked about it earlier, guys, and I know Alexander is throwing shots here and there. But how comfortable can a man for Dr. B from hip to hip? Oh, there we go, Alexander. We speculated about the body shots. Q. Alexander in agony right now. Will he get back up to his feet? Alexander's corner assuring him that he's good. Derry Vinchenko. A lot of time being wasted here. That's Derry Vinchenko's fault. Get in the Derry Vinchenko had an opportunity to maybe close the show there. A little bit too anxious. Say that early. Well, no, to the I said that. You didn't say that. Corey, who said that? <laughs> I said he wasn't. He was eating all the shots. That's the body shot right there. The left hook that I've been saying all fight. When you got a guy that's got a strong beard like that, go to the body. One shot, one left hook to the body. Put him down. All I know is about the fight that he was 90% of the shots were head shots. He wasn't going to the body. <laughs> I took a wild guess that he's going to go to the body in next round. <laughs> Hopefully. I'm going to say, guys, if you didn't know that a knockdown happened in that round, one guy who just got knocked down to the body didn't sit down, exactly. waiting at center ring. <laughs> Chico, as he always seems to between rounds, is just in anguish. Head is high. The head swell is out. Deeply. We'll see if Derevinchenko can go back downstairs and maybe score a knockout here. Okay, jab into the body. Alexander with those elbows tucked. Shell defense, but hands low, almost just inviting those headshots right now. Right. Normally, you go to the head like Devonchenko just did, and it forces a fighter to put his hands up. But Alexander just eating the shot so easily, he's like, "No, I'm, I'm just protecting this real estate down here." Well, it's, you, guys, you know, looking back at it.
it, it, there has been a little bit of a stylistic switch in Vaughn Alexander. Earlier in his career, it was, it was a lot more squared up. The hands were hands a little bit higher. Hands higher hands hands. Exactly. Then, as we mentioned a couple fights ago, he gets stopped to the body. Right. As he maybe changed his style a little she bit, he knows he can take some of these head shots as the body shots he does not want. Well, uh, that could very well be the case. Draw him in and let him throw a punch and then sneak that left hook under. Well, and that's been Alexander's approach as well. His best moments in this fight have just been waiting for that perfect opportunity to punch with Derry Vincenzo. I'm not going to lie. Usually just trying to create a little bit of room, trying to just parry that lead hand away, create some space where maybe he can get downstairs. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. I don't know in the background. I remember It is hard to find the body right now with how Alexander's walking forward, with where his elbows are, with where his hands are. Irvichenko is trying to find a way to create an opening because Alexander is just not going to give it to him. I'm pretty sure if I look this up, his alma mater wrote an article and it states, while the research so far is promising, we need more compelling evidence before yours is quite strict for people without these are meditations that have legit serious side effects. Every ice cream. When you don't care that your hair falls off are getting small, you want to trade off of the potential side effects. Yeah, that is the first line medication. But that's right, the first line. Number four is to show up, save your heart and your brain. Okay, I mean, like, this is pop medicine without ever understanding what you're actually saying. I'm not even joking that there's potential legal ramifications when you say, as a doctor, this is a medicine everyone should be on. I wouldn't be surprised if there's any legal or medical legal consequences for me to say this. It just it feels really irresponsible and disappointing. And and the ring together, two hard Dumb men bow, going at it here. <laughs> Overhead rotation, one rep till failure. Oh rock. my god. Do you know what worries me the most out of this whole situation? The fact that he's got a couple of like really skinny plates underneath his right foot. I, I <laughs> Do you know why he's right? Right? Maybe he he anything or moving but anything he has one exercise to But because it... You know, I think Devin Chico now knows what it feels like to fight himself. <laughs> you know, a guy that just keeps coming. He's just not throwing a lot of punches. It's not and that's the one thing. I think so. I think for Alexander, if he goes the distance with Derry Vincenco, who was, you know, inches away from maybe beating Jaime Munguia, obviously a well regarded fighter, you know, and obviously Vaughn Alexander comes to these fights hoping he's going to win. But plan B is he wants to get another good assignment, another good payday, and he's shown that he can still be very durable. There are younger fighters who would very much benefit from this type of fight. Yeah, you know, and amazingly, uh, because when he is suspicious, or less than stay, when we check for a foreign immigration, I mean, how can that stay and then would he shot with anybody? Anybody? I think a guy with a style like this, this in a chin like that, that if he do your eyes, can probably beat some of those younger guys just by overwhelming them. 
sure it was a conditioning oh, thing. No, no, no. Pain is not pollution. Pain is bringing a good medical All of them. On Alexander, he'll pull those offsets off once in a while. He's lost four of his last five, but the one win, that was an offset win over Brian Chavez, so he will pull them out. If you get a fighter who's not prepared to work for 10 rounds, you still will not be this guy. Not against Sergey. What color polish? Good body shot by Bowen Alexander. Black Mirror is real. It's happening, it's amongst us, and people are chewing and swimming in ice. It brings you joy, but it brings you joy. Jared Kachenko hit Vaughn Alexander with absolutely everything. You can also do the things if you slip into one place and get stuck under that ice. So you're still going here. This reminds me of one of the best chins in all of boxing. I don't think I'm going too far in saying that. And that makes no sense. People look at what they eat, how they live, how they walk, and inspiration of what we should be doing. But they live to like age 30. Why are we looking for inspiration from dudes and dudettes who live half the lives that we live today? They should look to us and say, oh my god, we want to put on shoes rather than we're going the other way. I, the logic of this is not insidable. Don't go into a random store. Here. So we're going to take one more look at that. At his body shot down, down that Von Alexander was able to survive. That is a beautiful left hook to the body. Great. Just goes to show you how effective the body shot is. It was just a long shot. You didn't no. do much with it. Sure. Look, 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 and, and, look, right spot. and look after that. He didn't actually go down. This, quickly. He could have kept punching him. But he didn't. Answer. All right, looks like we are ready to make this one official. Let's get it back up for Mr. Joe Martinez. Well, no, this is good. She's out. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. No way. I hope. No! No, don't do this to us under supervision. This is so bad. The reason this is so bad is that your teeth are covered by the map and damaging the map is permanent. Because then go back and tell the game back and try to cut it trying to cut your own hair and then it will grow. This actually lies in the game system where it wasn't the addiction that's on how he's chewing on the hair and the hair and the hair and the hair. Speaking of mental health, this is actually a great opportunity to talk about my Oh my goodness! So I don't give a fuck. Big fights in this 168-pound division. Speaking of big fights, we have so many of them coming your way in the coming months. Live here on the Zone. Boxing is buzzing, and the best are ready to fall heads. Showcasing over 150 fights a year, this one is the only place to watch these warriors worldwide every weekend. I always find it interesting when people say, like, my God, I don't know what I'm saying. 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 I don't know what I
settle things. <laughs> 29th, Phoenix will rise for two men with their eyes on the prize as Bam Rodriguez and Juan Francisco Estrada show that size actually doesn't matter at all. Explosive contests, multiple champions, just one place to catch every punch. But... Getting the Gardasil vaccine helps protect you from the hey, virus. It's you one of the rare vaccines that Devin Haney and actually myself can prevent for the cancer. Literally, I prevent it from the championship of the world. Prevent or There's a lot of history to get us through. There's been a lot of trash talk ahead of this, and so it's about time I shut everybody up. You know why? Because when you're in your house, your venture is the next to right now up. You're going to be happy to do that. But if you need an antibiotic, you come see me in the office. We figure out if you actually need it. Back live here at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. Corey Urban, Ock, and Barack. We just concluded the prelim portion of our card with a victory from Sergey Derevchenko over the double tough Von Alexander. Of course, coming up later on tonight is our main event between Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia. After all the madness, after all the controversy, finally, as Bernard Hopkins said. In the press conference, video, we, have a fight. we definitely have a fight here, and um, I never thought it was going to be in question, even though people were saying, oh, I, don't, I don't know if it should continue. Listen, these are antics of are you sure social media error. <laughs> this is antics of the social media error. That's it. You make as much noise, you troll as much as you can, and maybe you even put some of your personal problems out there, and that's all it was. But in the ring, it's going to be a fight. I never had any doubt. It's not going to happen. I know. If we, if we wanted to go somewhere, to given to right. what Ryan has been posting on social media, and again, house. there's or a lot of media believes that he that's felt the only way. this is going to do good as far as the yeah, you know, uh, pay-per-view uh, numbers, maybe this the, 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 the opponent and the team. And the weight, that's the issue, all right, it was unprofessional not to make the weight, but maybe he's saying, I'm sacrificing some money, but I'm going to go into this fight as strong as possible, and not the way I went into the team. Did Floyd do that against Marquez, purposely? He said, I'm yeah, going in 146 pounds, I don't care. No, for sure. Listen, you guys have, have purposely missed weight before. It wouldn't be the first time if indeed that is what it is. He's, he's just admitting it. Dude. All right, and, and listen, expensive too. giving Garcia the benefit of the doubt, we're assuming the best version of Ryan Garcia steps in the ring here tonight. For me, this is still a fascinating style matchup. I know Devin Haney is a, the betting favorite in this one, but the best version of Ryan Garcia for me against any 140-pounder is still a fight that I want to buy. 100%. Speaking of buying, Corey, I mean, that's another question in place right here. Man. Both of these guys, do they gel well to be a success in terms of pay-per-view? We all know what Ryan did with Tank, but we all know what Devin did with uh, Regis for great. These two guys together, with all the hoopla that's been going on on social media, will that turn into numbers? And that's a big question that needs to be answered. Well, stop listening to us and hit that QR code. <laughs> and let's get those numbers up because these are not the best guys at 140, and the winner of this probably fights what? A Tiafuma Lopez, maybe, or something like that? And become somebody will be a lineal champion? Something that people are not mentioning, what if this fight is a very competitive fight? Is there a rematch clause in the contract? I'm not sure about the details, but what if we see a competitive clause? Yo, Dex, you want to get on mute or something? Nobody's mentioned it. Well, a lot of questions left to be answered, but uh, with the final word, the final sell on this pay-per-view, it goes to this oh, man, Hawk, you voice the promo. Please, Let's go to please. it. And now you put 100 million women in the United States on birth control. This is what it's all about. Let's go so close. It's clear these fighters' orbits are expansive. It's like they even sound as bad. But it's April 20th approaches. It's still going to be a lot of focus. Thinking with this recording. Serving as the final stage. He said the belt will be free of hanging weight. We've partnered amateurs multiple times. You know, and, um, and the pros, we're going we to get it on when, when the time is right. You know, one guy that certainly has a history with you is the man to your left, also carrying a belt. That's me. Hey, hold up. I need a belt too. If you're the champ, I'm the champ, right? I'm the champ. I'm the champ. If you want to survive, you can find me. 
Right. Great theory, bro. Isn't it your friends in boxing? It's a lonely sport. Yeah. Yeah. I will break my nerves here. Now, two men long tethered are the rarest in the box. A legitimate game seal. We're fighting for the 140 pound titles. And I'm going to grab that green belt off a dead lady if I have to. And I'm going to sacrifice everything I have in that ring. I got to see this message. I'm coming to pick you up. And Ryan's going to win, Ryan's going to win. Devin, the dream hater, has proven himself all over the world. He's the one with a lot to lose. 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 He's the one
fingers, the tongue, first of all, is because these are the parts of the body that move the most heat, especially unnecessarily because there's no organs here. So the Hope body actually for a fantastic will down. The sun is shining, and we're about to play in the, the lift golf program here in Jeddah. Come and spend the day with me. Those areas so Morning. The danger of frostbite is once it becomes yeah. Thank you. official frostbite. Maybe I'll show you what's in my goodie bag. Once it starts affecting the sucking tissues, the muscles, and the tissues emerge, that's when you start Dolphals. destroying the It's going to be essential today. That's <gasps> further than what we've been doing. You don't want to oh my god, it's a Theragun wave solo for those post round knots. A Hugo Boss. Well, you know what's speaker. funny? Some I lovely gifts there to start the day. Just for those. We're like, gonna have some breakfast the and then we're gonna head out. If they're on the side of the road, there's a lot of traffic. If there's a farm nearby with pesticides and all these things, they can't clean the dead. But like in the wild, if you have nothing to eat, they are a good oh, source yeah. of stuff, right? Yeah, they actually have like, more that iron than spinach. Golf ball. And Plus not just the flower, oh, but the root is the There's something well, happening when I stand up. Yeah, yeah. 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 can't rush it. It's all right. No one died. I forgive you. We're basically, when you're dehydrated, your blood pressure is high. Nice to meet you. I'm playing with you guys today. Yeah, we're playing. Yeah, we're playing. Do you guys have any tips? Oh, thank you. That is a bit manky, but it's okay. The first option is blisters allowed. Oh, how old is this? There's also many where this happened as a result of people taping up today. Lucas Herbert saved the day. Don't want any blisters. Oh, yeah. See, what happens when you're on one of the shows alone and you think, do you just, like, good luck? Or do they have, like, a heart monitor? This is Michael, my new Hey, it says it's full. Open up the bag. Here's the bag. The bag is yours. Take it away. Absolutely. It's There's cool, bro. There. First shot today. We hold my glasses. I mean, I found that I'm the first two positive breast cancer. And then just heat off down the first hole. Going well. The bunker doesn't usually come into play with the back tees. where we usually playing, but it does off the ladies. Got myself a new caddy for the day. Playing with Caleb Surratt, who was ranked. So I'm one amateur who plays for Legion 13, John Ramsu team. Very excited to get to know him. Your body starts getting rid of him. Have a look at his golf game. He must be pretty good if he was on one amateur. And I've got a lovely team, a lovely score of Jerry. He's going to write down only birdies for us. You're actually making birdies. This is my teammate. That's why when folks can see the line, can you tell me your first part of your game and how you're going to excel in this team? So if you didn't drink coffee, just drink water. What color would you drink? <laughs> you can drive it the fairway. Long drive machine oh, sounds good. Yeah. So we're taking the best ball from everyone's drive, Honestly, excluding the pros. Scared. So hopefully off the red tees, I can provide something for you. I'm well, we're off. Pro round day has started. Just got out the bunker there. By the green, two par, par. Lovely start. There's a lot of issues. Let's play some holes together. When I did top letter a few years ago, I didn't know I was picking the course, but around me there were so many EMS professionals helping individuals that literally destroyed their knee because of the luck. You don't have this ability to try and push off. Ooh, this is your shot again. Perfect distance. Pretty darn good. Yeah, that blue attack is most likely professional. Member of the Crushers team. Hopefully, we crush this back nine. Generally, the system doesn't cause problems unless its size starts to get happy. 
Okay, what is going through your head during a program? One part of it is making sure that whoever I'm playing with is having fun, making sure they're comfortable, you're comfortable, or, you know, because some people get nervous, some people. So you want them to have a good experience? It's been an incredible day here in Perth. I've really enjoyed myself and playing with Philip Scott and Annabelle Lahiri. was a real treat because it's nice to get to talk to the walk in more like a casual setting. It also gave me some good tips, but I hope you enjoyed seeing my day here in the Lift Golf Jetta Pro-Am. And I'll see you next time. Thank yeah, so a lot of people are screaming that we miss this in the news. It is actually a board for surgery. That's not always the case. Physical therapy can help stabilize the joint, yet it is performed by strengthening the structures, structures, therefore allowing that area to heal. And yes, while it might not be perfect, it might allow you to get the same range of motion, the same strength that you would be happy with, that may be so beautiful also. But surgery shouldn't always be first for therapy. Here, babe, buy the, buy the fucking fight! It's Barge of Jason. It's Barge. It's Markali. You need to buy the fight. Throw the jab, throw the jab, throw the jab. They want to see that jab. I clicked on YouTube, then I sent a link to this Discord. It's a message of WhatsApp. That you can do a stream. I thought you could do a stream here. Hmm? Obviously, he's stronger. Stream? Is it TNT's big vibes? It's a new thing. If it's different about you. It's free, man. It's free, man. They do have like a usual Oh, God. It's like 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 no, I won't. I would like to say if I knock you out of the right hand. So it only has a left hook. It would be funny if I knock you out with a left hook. That would be, what if I knock you out with a left hook? That would be comedy. Yeah, go ahead. And if you're sick and vomiting and dehydrated faster because you have a that computer, happens. for example, that Stamp few it. days is going to change. But what happens when I am on stage? You demon? Yeah. Actually, I'm preventing you. You don't even want to take that possibility? You know, you're going to lose all the chance. Are we giving you the confidence, bro? Shut the fuck up. Are you gonna lie? Are you lying? Oh my god. A wage running. I'm telling you the truth. Like, that's a possibility. It's not going to happen. You, uh, father, Barry. It depends how long the total constipation has been. You can get constipation so bad that it causes the test of the drug to do the intestinal rupture. It depends what the cause of that is. Pressed with your performance is everybody was against Reach Brook, especially your power. You knock Reach down in the third round. I'm going to call myself. Hi, y'all. I'm going to call petition. I've been pretty sick. That fight we can be too. Is a high school student fighting a private gamer who attends a shooting range. Despite his attendance at this prestigious institution, we can assume rich or wealthy. Bro, can you just drop on it? Shut up. The guardian follows as the school is built on no continuous. He looks at the moon meeting to prepare the peaceful days. Do you think that's on the table? Ryan gets overly aggressive. We've seen him make. Yo, mute your fucking mic, bro. Yo, mute your fucking mic, bro. Hey, just start kicking motherfuckers without their mic off. Yeah. When he gets overly aggressive, he, 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 since the amateurs, he would try to just go in there, he would just try to just jump on It could be also dysentery, I get cholera. There's so many things that could be going on.
this is actually one of, like, one of the biggest movements worldwide is to provide like, drinking. No water. real strategy. Just try to just get you out of there. Try to get the fight over as fast as possible. We've seen Ryan get caught <laughs> in those times. And um, if he comes out like that, well, the question I would have for you then is, are you in the right place in your career for this? Okay. Like, this is the best so, I've felt, you know, I feel like I'm coming into, like, myself, you know, and, you know, I think I'm at the top of my game right now, mentally, spiritually, oh, everything. Oh, and, um, you're so specific way where you push out one end of the hook and with the string pull the other end of the hook while applying pressure that kind of allows it to come out pretty man screw the fucking fight me to take you know he has the crown right now and then you wire and then pull it out easily i don't like that because pushing anything in deeper just threatens you hitting a nerve of blood done for more bleeding more damage you haven't made chasing titles a priority much in the first part is it a priority now? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not yeah. really titles, it's just a person. Yeah. In front of me that I, I would like to fight. And if they so happen to have a title, great. Let's go! Let's fucking go! We got it! Um... I feel like I'm levels above him. I feel like, you know, he hasn't fought on, on that elite level. The people at DAZN are talking shit about this Discord right now. When he uh, did, they had to start it over because I guess they're on to them in a new one. He and I joined. It or not, the Bro. world watched him The world watched Colin Kaepernick. The so at the end of the day. Streaming. Where is it at? How do people watch the USC on streamings? The service crash. What 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 has he really done? Ever know about rock sugar? Who's streaming it? Um. What's up? I feel like Terry's he loves it. I feel like you know, he hasn't yeah. fought on on that elite yeah, level. But when he did, he quit. At the end of the day, rather he okay. want to admit it or not, the world watched him take a knee. The world watched him Colin Kaepernick. So at the end of the day. What are you saying in the middle, Nico? I'm saying it's the middle of the fucking really fridge. On the elite level. I feel like I was handicapped. Obviously, I don't want to get into that. But again. you quit, though. I was handicapped. But you did quit, though. So you have that in you. It's installed in you. Did, we we did see you quit. I feel like I can. I know. No, you don't even believe that. I do believe that. You do. I do believe it. I feel like if I wanted to, I could outbox you. Like, if I just move on my bike and beach, I could beat you like that. Please. I just don't want to do it. Please. It's not fun to me. Please. I can't fight the way you fight, bro. I'm it sorry. I'll, I'll be bored. In <laughs> you know, I can't. I, I need to get to it. Do you feel like you can? That's why he, he was trying to get to it with Tank. Bro, on his knees. bro if I was 140, Tank would have got knocked out. And Tank knows that. You know how scared he looked in his eyes when I hit him in the second round? I swear, I never seen somebody more scared in my life. He was, he was, what did he do? He looked at me and said, he didn't, there was no, he was running, like he was terrified. No, and you know what he said? He goes, if I drop you like Luke Campbell, I'm gonna go after your ass. He dropped me and he didn't take a step forward. Why is that? Think about it. You think you got a chin? Do you got a chin? You got a little wobble too. We seen, you, we seen, you, we seen you get no, knocked down. But I never did We seen you get knocked down. Yeah, I get you up, got knocked down. I get, with, up. I get up within you like a second though. Every up. Up. Oh. I didn't go down. You was fucked up. You yeah. went down. Oh, that's. I think what you so have you, you was worse. No, we saw you. We saw. Oh, when you worse. got hit, you were like this. Did I go down? Legs. Did I go down? No, we but that's go down. worse. We seen you go. Down. That's not a chin. Oh my. God. When I get dropped and come right back up, bro, that's a chin. Muhammad that's Ali chin. got dropped and then he wakes up and he had the best chin in the game. That makes no sense. I actually have so a chin. I don't have a chin. I don't know. I, I gotta see. That's, it. A, that's a good thing, man.
I really don't you know. You don't know that's a good thing. I don't know if you have a chin that's or not. That's a good thing. Well, the good thing is April 20th, we're going to find out. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. You find him in the cabin or no? Yeah, who's shooting it? Who's shooting it? Ryan won already. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> huh? Oh, shit. Shut the up. Shut Everyone in here is a pretty much fucking retard. Well, the time for talking is over. After one of the most confusing build-ups in recent history, we are going to find out tonight if Ryan Garcia is just playing games. What he can't afford to play about is Devin Haney, the reigning WBC super lightweight champion. Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up a stage channel within Discord. So all of the rage lately has been apps like Clubhouse and then you have Twitter stages. Well, Discord jump as these enable community and check these boxes here in the middle where it says enable community. Go to enable community. Under community, you'll see a new tab here right in the middle where it says enable community. Go to enable community and then go to the blue get started or a moderator. I want to watch the people fight in this so, chat. In order to do this within Discord, what you need to do is go to your server. You That's have to have hilarious. access to the settings on the server. So you have to be either a server creator, the, the owner of the oh, server, over. or a moderator who has these it's roles. As yes, well. So once you're here, go up to your server and then go to server settings. Hit the drop down menu here and then go to server <laughs> settings. The first thing that you have to do here is go under community you'll see a new tab here right in the middle where it says enable community go to enable community and then go to the blue get started button there in the very middle all of this is just kind of uh, I guess you would say upkeep things so make sure uh, you go here you hit the checkbox here and then just click the next button for a couple of times uh, go next go next uh, and then go ahead and check these boxes here that you agree and understand what's going on and then click the finish setup button there in the lower right hand corner once you have enabled community you should now see now we can go ahead and create a stage create channel it's going to give you a list of the types of channels that you can create we now have text voice announcement over here where your channels are listed. So right click over there on the far left. Garbage bag. No. For what? The outside? No. Bro, is this shit going on or what? Jason Ryan.
Nation's a good jab. Great, you got great defense, great uh, body shots. That's everything on there. That's that everything on there. That's your taste. That's that everything on that motherfucker. That's that garlic on there. That's that Cajun. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, it's definitely been a wild and uh, at times disconcerting build up to this fight. Is Ryan Shut really just trolling? Up, Only this Shut fight is going to tell us. Get y'all popping already. 420, you still got to go. Wow. So now, working or what? So why does they you got Indian clothes? So what the fuck am I seeing? Hey Ryan, let's do five hundred thousand per pound. What the fuck is a fucking box? Yeah, y'all hit y'all hit The world will see that I'm levels above yeah, this average fighter. Time. I'm a true champion, and I will yeah. show it. Bro, where's the fucking fight? Well, that Bro, you ain't see the little shit. Where you put the little stream in? That nigga, that shit's on the arcade. Shut the fuck up, bro. Oh, what? John Scrappy Ramirez faces David Jimenez in a 12th rounder for the vacant WBA Super Flyweight Championship of the world. The aggressive southpaw Whoa, Baker Bully Gang. continues his chase for a major Whoa, title. Well, he takes on that the 22-0-1 at Pierre de Corbin. Ten rounds at super middleweight for that one. And in our co-main 29-0, Arnold Barbosa Jr. fights Island Sean, the public nuisance yeah. for home, who is making his U.S. debut. And then the main event, the WBC super lightweight champion, two-division champ Devin Haney against one of the biggest stars in boxing, Ryan Garcia, in a fight that has been brewing for years. Okay, everybody, let me introduce you to the rest of our team for tonight's fights. We got Todd Grisham, Sergio Mora, Chris hey, Mannix. We We're going to pull the action for you ringside and Adi Oladipo and Ariel Helwani. We're going to bring you the latest news and interviews from backstage. Let's start with you. What's up, Adi? Thank you, Kate. What's up? Um, this is interesting, isn't it? I love this walkway. Oh, this is tremendous. Yeah, I, this must be one of the best walkways I've seen in a long time. I want to pick you back on a couple of things. Firstly, how good is it to be at the Barclays? But One of the great fight towns, fights happen finally that much back, anymore. a big right. fight here, this is tremendous. It is, and the second thing I want to piggyback on what the guy spoke about upstairs was this 1.5 potential yes. million pound fee that Ryan has to pay to Devon. Obviously, you were at the press conference when they shook on it, right? If Ryan was going to come in any pound over the weight class, he was going to have to pay $500,000 per pound. My maths aren't great, but I can do this one. $1.5 million, Ryan Garcia, as it stands right now, owes to Devin Haney. That's crazy. It is crazy. And if you watch the press conference, you'll you'll notice that his father was trying to tell him, like, don't do it. And yeah. that was a telltale sign. It's a nice story. I don't know how accurate it is, and I'll explain why. I spoke to Team Haney this morning, and they told me as far as the contract is concerned, the contract that they had to renegotiate after he missed weight because Haney could have just walked off and said, I'm not fighting this yeah. fight. Of course, you know, that would be turn. very silly. The actual yeah, contract audio, states no 200000 per pound 
that he missed. So actually, he owes him 600000 Now, they also said, look, we hope that he honors the bet. We hope that he honors the handshake. But as far as the actual black and white contract is concerned, it's actually 600000 not one5 Okay, I mean, what was one5 600000 to these multi-millionaires? By the way, Devin has confirmed that Ryan will pay that money as well. So yeah, Devin's we'll going to walk let's away with a lot of money for a time. Let's see if Ryan gets the man who's got to pay that oh, check. Let's, 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 let's talk about now. the antics of Ryan Garcia. Uh, All right, leave it how it is. And I might be just yeah. by myself yeah, Everybody quiet. I wanted to die on this hill. I think it's all been a case of Ryan's sold the fight different. and Ryan's the locked in. Up, uh, I think we are going to see a locked in Ryan hey, Garcia. You. You're shaking hey, your head. No. You. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, thanks, G. I appreciate it. Where was the owner? If he was locked in, he would have made the Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a nice story, but once he got to Brooklyn, he had to be switched on. He hasn't been switched on. Now, to his credit, he has shown up to everything this week on time. He's first at the day on Thursday. He shows up to the workout. He showed up to the lane yesterday. The delay wasn't because of Ryan. It was because of Haney. But... The missing of the weight to me told me that he wasn't a hundred percent. I think the missing of the weight is a case of I don't have to make the weight. No. Nah. I don't necessarily care about the belt. I just care about getting the W. But but we'll see. And to my point as well, I mean look, we spoke about the fact that he came onto the stage with a it looks like a, a bottle of beer in his hands and he confirmed to you yeah. it was apple juice. Right before it he goes walked to on the, the stage, antics part. He said there's levels to this game, Ariel. Yeah. It's apple juice, chill out. Now, you know, who knows and everyone's running with that. But here's the thing. You could do all of this, you can even miss weight, you cannot be hundred percent locked in when you're fighting lesser opponents. In my opinion, Devin Haney's one of the best fighters on the planet, pound for pound. Look at what he just did to Regis Progray when he moved yeah. up to 140 back in December. You can't mess around with him. You can't not be 100% in it. And that's what concerns me about Ryan. If he truly isn't 1,000% focused today or tonight, it's going to be, I, I said earlier, a long night. It actually will be a short night for him because Haney will make easy work of him. Yeah, not just that. Obviously, a fantastic fight card as well. Obviously, the main event, Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. We want you at home to get involved. You see the QR code. Make sure you scan it. So many good things for you to enjoy tonight, including Fantasy Fight League, which I love because I could fight you on it. Yes. Everyone's been uh, asking for this. Another 10 versus round for you, Ariel. honey, if that goes down. <laughs> you, know you know yourself, You know yourself. You don't get up to the body yeah, shots, Ariel. Yeah. You don't uh, get up to the body shots. Anyway, as Kay said, our A-Star commentary team is ringside as well. So, Todd, what have you got to tell us? Todd Grisham here with Sergio Mora and, of course, Chris Mannix. And DAZN hasn't been to Barclays before, but all three of us were here nine years ago when Sergio Mora and Daniel Jacobs competed in the round of the year, according to Chris Mannix and Sports Illustrated. Ouch. I remember this right hook right there. I didn't expect that punch. That man punches really hard. Great fans, great atmosphere. But, but here I had it to comes. Get it back. Here it comes. I had to get it back. He went for the kill, and when you go for the kill, hey, you're susceptible, susceptible for the kill. So here I go, I'm trying to get away. I'm setting up for the left hook, and boom, right on the chin. <laughs> That's the good news. The bad news is he got up and stopped me the next round. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let the, the details get in the way of a good story, Sergio. That was indeed the round of the year back in 2015. <laughs> Let's talk about the fight tonight. You fought for over two decades. You never missed weight once. Ryan Garcia not only missed it by three pounds, but he was extremely unapologetic for missing weight. What does that tell you? Well, it shows me that it tells me that he doesn't he doesn't care what people think about him and the erratic behavior. He, he's not responsible. I mean, look, a professional fighter, especially on the championship level, on the big stage, you're responsible for a lot of duties. You know, you have to take care of the press. You have to take care of the training, come in here in shape. But of course, you have to make weight. Fighters lie, promoters lie, the scale on the numbers don't lie. So he didn't miss weight, he wasn't ready for this fight. It's definitely unprofessional, and it's definitely disappointing because one of the narratives around this fight was Ryan Garcia going for his first world title. Now that is off the table, but you don't have to look very far to find examples of fighters missing weight and then having spectacular performances. Go back to 2005, when Jose Luis Castillo fought Diego Corrales in a rematch of a terrific first fight. Castillo came in three and a half pounds overweight for that fight and knocked Corrales out with one shot in the fourth round. Fast forward four years from that, Floyd Mayweather Jr., one of the most disciplined guys out there, he blew off the catch weight for Juan Manuel Marquez and went out there the next night and completely blew out Marquez in their fight. So it is disappointing that Ryan Garcia will not fight for a world title tonight, but it does not in any way, shape, or form affect his chances to win. As for his chances to win, let's talk about uh, Ryan Garcia. Sergio, he said a lot of things. He's done some, some bizarre things. But one constant, he's always said, I will dominate Devin Haney. How does he do it? Well, look, 
Devin Haney knows what he has. His best weapon is that left hand, that lethal left hook. He can turn it into an uppercut. He can turn it into a wicked jab. But ultimately, it's the left hand. If he wants to catch Devin Haney off guard, he has to do the right hand. He can knock out fighters with that knock out, knock, the right hand. It's an over the hand, over the top, chopping right hook. Just like he caught Oscar Duarte there. And he tries to come up under the bottom. That's also a hard shot. So if you can catch Devin Haney off guard with that right hand, hey, we might have a different story here. As for Devin Haney, who's ballooned up to what, about a 10-to-1 favorite, started out as 3-to-1 favorite when this promotion started. He says to anyone that congratulates them on his success, it's not just me, it's me and my dad, his father, Bill Haney, his trainer. He does whatever his father says. And his dad, if you believe him, says, listen, Unlike other performances where we're disciplined and technical, I told my son to go kill him and stand right in the middle of the ring. Is he really going to do that? Nope. No chance. <laughs> that just isn't Devin Haney. If you look at Devin Haney's last couple of years, he has fought some incredibly disciplined fights at the highest level. Here's Devin Haney going up against Regis Progray, using that long jab, one of the best jabs in all of boxing to disrupt Regis Progray's momentum, and then a stiff right hand. We've seen Devin Haney have something of a power surge at 140 pounds. He dropped Regis Progray early in that fight. He wobbled him in the later stages. Devin Haney is not going out there and engaging in a brawl. He is going to fight a disciplined fight tonight. That is our main event. Let's get this party started. Our first of five fights starts now. And here's our tail to tape live from Brooklyn, New York. Charles Conwell just signed a deal with Golden Boy Promotions. Says, I can't just win tonight. I've got to look sensational. He'll face off against veteran Nathaniel Gallimore, 35 years old, 5'11", 2 inches taller, and a 2.5-inch reach advantage over Conwell. Let's go into the ring. And Joe Martinez. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening and welcome to an exciting night of world-class professional boxing, all brought to you by Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions. This evening is sponsored by Wild Casino, America's most trusted online casino. Wild Casino, get wild. Only fans where creators earn and Everlast, the choice of champions and preeminent choice in leaders of boxing since 1910. And now, fine fans, we are set to go with our first bout this evening on pay-per-view. Ten rounds in the super welterweight division. And first to make his way to the ring, from Chicago, Illinois, Nathan Gallimore! Nathaniel Gallimore got a late start in the sweet science, took up boxing at the age of 22, grew up in Kingston, Jamaica before his family moved to Illinois. Chris, he's on quite a slump right now. He's lost six of his last eight following his 21 and one start. Yeah, but he has faced some really good competition. J-Rock Williams, Erickson Lubin, Sebastian Fedora. In his last fight, he lost a Rock'em Sock'em Robot type of contest to Sergey Boychuk, who just had a great performance of his own a couple of weeks back. He is unquestionably a gatekeeper in this weight class, but he is not someone that's going to be an easy out. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, the undefeated native of Cleveland, Ohio, here is Charles Conwell! Very bright future for Charles Conwell, only 26 years old, 18-0, with 13 knockouts. But Sergio, he's been bitten by the inactivity bug. This is only his third fight since 2021. Yeah, you know what? And that's the thing about talent and skill. You know, inactivity kills that. It rusts a fighter. You know, staying busy and being with the right promoter, the right manager, pushing you the right way. That's how you keep that momentum going. So Conwell's going to have that momentum. He has an undefeated record. He has that Olympic pedigree. It's only a matter of time till the name Charles Conwell gets recognized. Once again, ladies and 
ladies and gentlemen, this round, this round, this round, this first fight tonight, together for 10 rounds in the Super Welterweight Division. The three judges scoring at ringside, John Basile, Anthony Palillo, and Waleska Roldan. Inside the ring, your referee in charge of the action, Arthur Mercanti. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing orange trunks. He weighed officially 153 pounds. His professional record stands at 22 victories, including 17 knockouts, seven defeats, with one draw from the windy city of Chicago, Illinois. Here is Nate, the great Gamboy! Aimed across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing green with black. He too weighed in 153 pounds. In 18 professional fights, he is perfect in the ring. 18 victories, including 13 wins coming by way of knockout. There's a 2016 U.S. Boxing Olympian from Cleveland, Ohio, the undefeated Charles Bad News Conway! Good evening, gentlemen. We went over the rules early in the night. I expect you to all be ready. You guys have a nice, clean fight. Touch gloves. Good luck to the both of you. And if you got background sound, please move. So it's Charles Bad News Conwell taking on Nate the Great Gallimore. And I mentioned this a few minutes ago. Sergio Conwell said, I can't just beat on, this geez. guy. I can't get a boring decision win. Got to make a statement. No, all eyes are on him, and uh, this is an opportunity that fighters like him wait for, you know, so okay. yeah, absolutely, and he has the power to do it. He's a strong, stocky fighter, but if he puts his foot on the gas and gets aggressive, you know, there's going to be a right-hand opening there on the taller Gallimore. Charles Conwell in the green trunks, Gallimore in the orange. And Gallimore brings that experience, you know, he's been in there with some big names, some champions, hard punchers, so it's going to take more than just power for Gallimore to break down a veteran like Gallimore. Yeah, has Gallimore, to be sneaky in there. Gallimore 22 wins, 17 by knockout, so packs plenty of pop. Conwell does too, though, Sergio. He stopped six of his last eight opponents. No, absolutely, and it's who you're beating and who you're fighting, you know. Conwell, Conwell needs to, you know, step up on his resume, and this is a good name to have on his resume right now. Scheduled for 10 rounds. Neither one of these gentlemen has fought in over 14 months, so it's rust versus rust. Yeah, nowhere to shake, shake off that rust. It's a jab, you know, get those cobwebs off, you know, fight under the bright lights. Just get that, that jab popping. Just like that. Both of them are getting good with the jab right now, breaking the range. You know, I mentioned Gallimore's gatekeeper status, and sometimes a gatekeeper wins. That's exactly what Gallimore did back in 2021 when he knocked off Leon Lawson, who was undefeated at that time so he can be a spoiler in fights like this downstairs with the right hand and back comes Gallimore with the right hand right there it's like they're going tit for tat the same punches right now it's all straight punches no hooks they're not really uh loading up either they're touching each other's gloves they want to counter each other's uh jab see as a shorter fighter you know Conwell needs to double and triple up the jab while keeping his chin, chin tucked in. Once he breaks that distance and gets inside, he can rip away at the body. Tried to land the right the hand, just missed. Yeah, right. Conwell loves those body shots. But a third of his landed punches are body shots. I was asking this morning, like, why are you so dedicated to the body? Why do you think more fighters aren't as dedicated? Because like, you can't see the results right away. It takes six, seven rounds before you get the results of good body work. Absolutely, and, and since he's the shorter fighter by two inches right now, it'll serve him well just to start touching and get, getting that front foot placement, the position in place to start letting go of combinations, not just the, the single and double jabs. Yeah, Conwell said, look, a lot of guys just don't have the patience to stick to the body work. They get frustrated. They're not seeing instant results. He said, I've got the patience. Well, he has the patience right now, but right now Gallimore has the, the length. He's landing some good jabs. He's, keep, he's keeping Conwell at bay. Counter right on the ear, and that can cause all sorts of problems as Gallimore covers up. Got him again. Downstairs, there's the body work Chris was talking about, and a good spell here at the end of the first round for Charles Conwell.
I've gone the distance more than a few times to win my titles. But you can get an instant victory with DraftKings Sportsbook. New customers can bet just $5 to get 200 in bonus bets instantly, no matter how the fight goes down. Whether it's an early KO or a battle to the final bell, you're bringing home a win. Download the app, enter the promo code, and bet $5 to get 200 in bonus bets instantly. Life's more fun when you're in on the action. The crown is yours. What you got to say? More busy, man. That's all Second I got to say. Get more busy. You don't hear that too often, Sergio, where the trainer looks at the fighter and goes, what you got to say? <laughs> He's no. like, well, I'll tell you what. They want him to be busier with that jab, and I agree because, like we said, he has a good jab, but he's getting uh, out jab by the taller fighter right now, so he has to use his size advantage, you know, to get inside. And there's definitely going to be an adjustment for Charles Conwell getting back in the ring. He dealt with some significant managerial promotional issues over the last couple of years that led to these stops and starts. So he acknowledges that there's going to be some ring rust early on. Well, he had a good end to the first round. Perhaps won him that round after it was a nice start for Gallimore. Using the jab and the length. Back downstairs goes Conwell. And you can hear those body punches landing. Yeah, he digs. He plants his feet and really gets all the leverage with those body shots, and that's where that stocky figure comes into play. Watch that elbow. He's really athletic, Conwell. Watch that elbow, son. Yeah, I remember watching Conwell in Rio at the 2016 Olympics. He got eliminated early in those Olympic games, but I remember thinking this was a kid that had a lot more potential as a pro because of the style that he does as an amateur. I, yeah, I was about to say that because uh, even though he was an Olympian, his style doesn't suit that Olympic point system. Oh, boy, nice right hand again for Conwell in the uppercut. You know, he's kind of like a throwback fighter. Notice how he keeps his elbows in, hands up. You know, he doesn't punch unless he's in position. And then he 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 loads up on right hands. But if he can hide hide that right hand with jabs, you know, do it the smart way, that's the way you uh you actually can detonate with that right hand more, more professionally. Yeah, and he was an Olympian, but he was the youngest member of that USA boxing team, just 18 years old. So he's had a lot of room to grow over the last eight years. And more good work. From Bad News Conwell here in round two. When he puts his combinations together, Sergio, he's doing damage. Well, I don't know about damage yet, Todd, but he's getting respect, that's for sure. And Gallimore's on the back foot. Gallimore's doing the right thing to pivot to his right every time Gallimore gets aggressive. Watch that elbow, champ. Oof. Right again, splits the guard, then goes back downstairs to the body. Notice how Conwell's throwing these sneaky uppercuts now, left uppercuts now. They were just usually right uppercuts now. He's coming on both sides. You know, taller fighters aren't accustomed for, for punches coming from underneath like that. <laughs> Gallimore wanted that one. Conwell nowhere near. <laughs> Conwell currently rated first by the WBC despite not having fought in a year and two months. So they believe in him. Conwell again try to close the distance, and boy does he. Lands a few more power punches as we wind down round number two. What a beautiful move by Conwell right there. Roll with the shot, came back with that uppercut. Engineered to meet or exceed original equipment performance exclusively at AutoZone. Just let that hand go straight down the pipe. Okay? Put snaps on your damn as a six. You don't got to say he's excited. Because he want to make a save in here for his friend. Let him do all the thinking. Let him do all the worrying. Just catch him coming in. Just stay calm and relax. He's going to fall for the trap. But you got to set it up for me. Set it up nice. And stay away from the damn rope. Easy money, a little head movement here and there. This is easy money. Look at how smooth and collected this is by Charles Conwell right here. He got that right hand in, right on the chin. Credit, you gotta give credit to Gallimore. Like I said, he could take a punch, but at the end of that round, Conwell made a smooth move with the shoulder roll, came back with a beautiful right uppercut that shook Gallimore. 
Interesting advice in the corner of Nathaniel Gallimore. Chris, he said this could be easy work. Let him do all the worrying, all the moving. You just catch him coming in. No, he's not wrong about Kalamba wanting to be a bully in the ring, but to beat the bully, you've got to kind of push back the bully. We're not seeing a lot of that from Gallimore. Or lure in the bully. I think that's a, that's a little bit the advice they're giving him. He's Man. lured him in a yeah. Boy, what these punches are being blocked, Sergio, but they're still affecting Gallimore. Yeah, I don't like the way that Gallimore's knees are buckling every time he's caught him again. Shots. He did catch Conwell with a nice little Watch check it. hook there. But this Watch is the kind of performance trip. that Conwell promised us. I'm going to get him. Look at the blood already pouring out of the eye and nose of Gallimore. These are heavy shots by Conwell going around the guard. Oh. Conwell's fight like this is a three-rounder. Don't push. Everything he's got into these power shots. And he's got a diverse punch selection here. That uppercut up the middle. Power shots to the head. Back downstairs to the body. Arthur McCatsy looking, yeah. looking closely right now. He almost started jogging towards him, didn't even he? Though, even though Gallimore's having his hands up, it doesn't matter. He's still, some of those punches still having a lot of effect. And the uppercut continues to split the guard. And the face of Gallimore is really telling the story here as blood's pouring out. Yeah, blood from the right eye, blood from the mouth, blood from the nose. Keep it clean. Gallimore has only been stopped twice in his career by Sebastian Fendora and Sergei Boachuk. That Fandora loss aged well now that Fandora is a unified champion. Hey, the Boachuk loss aged pretty well too after what Boachuk did to Brian Mendoza. Yes, sir. But what an impressive start for Conwell, and he keeps going back to that uppercut. I would like to see him do the Mike Tyson bang away at the right side of the body and then come up with the uppercut. That's going to get the there taller. There it is again. That's going to get the taller fighter to bend in half. Then that left up, left the right uppercut to land. Mike Tyson was an expert at that, using a short advantage to explode on taller opponents. Correct me if I'm wrong, Sergio, but no punch you can throw leaves you more exposed than the uppercut. Conwell's thrown about 20 of them. Why hasn't Gallimore been able to take advantage? Well, because he, the Conwell's so concise and compact. He's strong, so he has to respect the power. So he has to I would like to see him do the Mike Tyson bang away at the right the inside of the body and then come up with the uppercut. That's going to get the there it is again. That's going to get the taller fighter to bend in half. Then you your mic, bro. Another good round Time. for Conwell. That's what yeah, I'm talking Doc. about, son. Our That's how we gotta do. Man, right? We can't do no soft stuff. You know what I'm saying? We gotta serve that all the time. Who the fuck is winning? Conwell experiencing the business side of boxing. He's also seen the business side of boxing. In 2019, Patrick Day, just 27 years old, died yeah, yeah. as a result of injuries he suffered during a knockout loss to Conwell. Conwell told me he took him. I can't watch this shit, man. Who's winning? He still kind of lives with it. He says he doesn't. He's just found a way to channel his feelings into something positive. He doesn't mind talking about Patrick now because he goes by talking. People remember Patrick for the person that he was. Do you see there? Where's that label on his trunks in his fight? Devin Haney just got knocked out. There you go. Breathe. Deep breath. Deep breath. Let your hands go. Give me good jab. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Devin Haney just got knocked out. We're going to take a look at Charles, uh, excuse me, Nathaniel Gallimore. Time in. That's, ne that's never a good sign. No, and I don't think we're at the point where a doctor is going to stop the fight. But I promise you, if Arthur Briganti sees Gallimore standing there taking punches without throwing them back, he's going to step in. The reason the doctor came in right there is the, it's the way the blood's getting in the eye. You know, it, it's covering the, the white of the, of the fighter's eye. So maybe, it looks like he's tearing blood, but it's not a cut that's really, you know, going to be effective enough to stop the fight. Watch it just looks up. bad. I love in the corner of Conwell, they said, that's, that's the round we want. Elbow, no two, more of that okay? soft oh, stuff. Good. They just want to bring the pain every round. And boy, is Conwell doing that. He is a 54 physical. landed power punches. Sorry, Todd. He, he is a physical, physical fighter. Charles Conwell loves a fight in the phone booth. Keep 
Watch your heads. 13 knockouts and 18 wins for Comwell. He appears to be headed towards a, a stoppage victory in this one if he can continue the pace that he set over the first three rounds. Although Gallimore's having a nice little moment. Yeah, I was about to say, man, uh, credit to Gallimore. He's game. He's been taking some heavy shots. Even though they're blocked, they're still heavy shots. But look at he's digging away at the body as a taller fighter. If he can start doubling up with one of those shots to the body, I think he can get more momentum going his way. But he can't swing and miss like that or he'll be punished. Yeah, and Sergio, I'm not surprised that Gallimore has taken this punishment. I was at that fight against Bonechuk in Los Angeles last year, and Bonechuk hit him with everything. And it took seven rounds to get him out of there. So this guy's got a chin. He's a durable fighter. I mean, Erickson Lubin, who's a puncher and, and stocky, couldn't get him out of there as well. J-Rock Williams, I mean, these are solid names on his resume that, you know, he went the distance with. Oh, can't leave your chin exposed like that. And didn't even fall off balance. And that's where the athleticism comes in for Conwell. Even when he misses, he stays in place. Looks like some swelling around the left eye of Charles Conwell. They've been putting the in-swell on it. There's another uppercut. Have you been in that situation, Sergio, where maybe a punch you don't normally throw that often? Is doing so well for you in a fight, you just keep going back to it over no, and over no, again. Of course, every fighter's gone through there. You know, that's where you know you're 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 learning your opponent. You know, you're seeing what works. Sometimes you could train for something in the gym and it's not gonna work in there, so you gotta you gotta go to plan B and C. And that goes for punches as well. Sometimes a guy that you're in there with that you're not expecting to punch hard, punches harder than his record indicates, and you gotta switch it up again. <laughs> Peter McGrail will take yeah, on former British Super Bantamweight champion Mark Leach, who steps in on late notice one week tonight live from Liverpool exclusively on the zone. Leach, remember? A famous leech, lifestyles of the rich and famous. <laughs> yeah, nice Robin Leach. Robin nice Leach. Champagne <laughs> wishes and caviar <laughs> dreams. <laughs> and look, man, this is this is a nice, nice right hand right there, right on the temple. But these are the things that I give Gal more credit for. He stays so loose, you know. He's so loose with those shots. Sometimes he rolls with it. Sometimes he he takes the power away from it because. Whenever you're dealing with a veteran, they know how to do that. They know how to roll with the shot, stay calm, take the power away from the from the punch. Nathaniel Gallimore, a tough guy, and he takes on tough opposition. He's fighting his fourth undefeated opponent in his last five fights. His phone rings, Chris, he's answering it. Round five, scheduled for 10 here at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. Charles Conwell in his first fight under the Golden Boy banner promised to impress and so far Sergio are you impressed? Um, not yet. This is where he needs to step it up because he doesn't want to give a, a veteran like Nathaniel Gallimore any type of uh, Encourage him. You don't want to give him no confidence So Conwell needs to step on the gas right now just like his trainers telling him make him feel his age Gallimore's 35 years old make him feel those legs. Yeah, I think I'd like to see him do it by going back downstairs Conwell landed 26 body shots through the first two rounds over the last two just two so he's been headhunting a little bit more over these last couple of rounds I can see him go back to the bread and butter at the body and that's what happens whenever you're you're hitting your opponent so easily on the gloves and the forearms you know you're hitting something so you got to make a opponent totally miss to discourage him from being so offensive but Gallimore's not doing that I'm your only competitive brother I'm ready for a rematch. Game on. This is the first fight on a five-fight card, of course. Headline, Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney in our main event. Good shot there. It was a 45-degree left hand right there by Conwell. It came in a different trajectory that Gallimore was expecting. Really good shot. You reach for one, right? Like, oh, and the 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 triple left hook and then a right hand. Gallimore was just 
just sitting there waiting for it. Yeah, but he's kind of rolling with those shots, you know? He's taking the power away from him. I don't know about that, Sergio. He might roll his way right out of the ring. I'm telling you right now. Oh, big red again for Coco. The referee getting a good look. Yeah, I'm more doing what Gallimore does. He knows how to fight like a veteran. He's lost seven times, only been stopped two times. He knows how to survive. You may not see that he's rolling with the shots. Yes, some of them are getting through, but this man knows how to survive. Come on, needs to double and triple up with the shots on one side. Instead of coming with left and right, he needs to double up and switch the momentum. I don't know how many he's rolling with Sergio, but I'm right. He is veteran moves here, tying him up. Making it kind of a clinch on the inside. I think you're, you're, I think you're both crazy. Conwell's beating the hell out of him in this round. Look at him, pillar to post. The referee's about to stop him. Hey, the person's talking his team. The not doing anything back. <laughs> oh, just, he's throwing home run shots now. Conwell thought he could get Gallimore out. Good day for your night. Good day for your night. Yeah. You're good. I'm, 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 I'm not going to you take any more like this, all right? You're not doing nothing. 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 You're all right, Todd, here you go, look. Yeah, it's slow motion of course. Like you see, that's a nice shot. That's okay. the one I got. That's what I said. Came from the bottom. Okay. I like that punch. It was a trajectory. The fact that Gallimore didn't expect that punch coming from the shorter fighter. That There's two nice left hooks. Then he started rolling with yeah. from here on. This is where it got good at Gallimore, but they weren't landing as solid as oh, you saw. It looked worse than it was, but I'm telling you, Gallimore oh, is a veteran. Watch your heads. Nevertheless, the fight continues. Round six, scheduled for 10. The referee warning Gallimore, I'm not gonna let you get beat down like that. Ooh, good shot there by Gallimore. He's, I'm sorry, uh, good shot by Kama. He stopped Gallimore from moving because he dug down downstairs and they can't double up the left hook to the body and the chin. That stops the, the, the ebb and flow that Gallimore's accustomed to. You heard the corner say to Nathan, look, if you're going to win a fight, you got to fight back. And right now, he's just become a punching bag. Yeah, and I think we've reached the point where you couldn't complain if Arthur Mercanti steps in and stops this fight. 35 years old. He stopped it right there. Charles Conwell got the job. Done in his Golden Boy debut, his 14th knockout, and he's now 19 and 0. Fuck this, this boy, such a big ass up. I'm here for your safety, my friend. You're taking too many headshots, bro. Sergio, I asked you earlier, did Conwell impress you yet? You said not yet. Well, the fight's over. How about now? Hey, yes, he did. Hey, it's just he one dude with his microphone. Y'all can see it. I'm going to tell you, the some good names. Conwell add that name to the list. You know, so only undefeated fighters, only good fighters beat down Gallimore. Conwell's one more on the list. Yeah, I love that performance from Charles Conwell. Exactly what he needed coming off a long layoff. Went into the second half of the fight. Had to dig deep to land those power shots. Exactly the kind of win he needs as he pushes his career forward. Only the WBC has him rated, Chris. What do you think his future will look like now? I don't think if you're Charles Conwell, you worry too much about world title opportunities. You just want activity. You just want chances to do stuff like this. Look, I mentioned right before the stoppage, Arthur Recanti would have been well within bounds to make that kind of stoppage. There was nothing coming back from Nathan Gallup. No, no, I, I, I hear that. It was more the fact that nothing was, he wasn't punching back. His body language was starting to, you know, he, he was starting to, shift too much with those power shots even though they weren't even that clean landing on the chin they were still blocked in the reaction and the body the body language was just bad so yeah i agree with the stoppage yeah and if you're conwell as i mentioned you want to get two more fights in this year golden boy has a pretty robust schedule to do a lot of shows you want to get him out there summertime again late fall keep him busy as he builds towards that world title opportunity in 2025. 
What a schedule we have coming up on the zone. Perhaps none bigger than Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world, May 18th. You can buy it now on the DAZN app. So Charles Conwell, who told us, I'm going for the knockout. I want to turn some heads. I want to make headlines. He got that stoppage, and it'll be proven with Joe Martinez's announcement now. I stumbled through that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes officially. 52 seconds. Round number six, referee Arthur Mercanti puts a halt to the fight for your winner by TKO and still undefeated, Charles Bad News Conwell! So good news for bad news today as he approves to 19-0 and, oh, and as Chris Mannix mentioned, he wants to get back in the ring as soon as possible, build on that resume. Sergio, he's only 26 years old. Hey, as long as he stays active, he's going to get better. He's going to feel more confident. The punches are going to come. He has the power. He has the power. He just needs the activity and the confidence to, to believe in himself and get these guys out of there. And you know who Golden Boy has at 154? Virgil Ortiz. We'll see you next week. Here's our highlights from our opening bout. Charles Conwell versus Nathaniel Gallimore. Yeah, you know what? You got to give Kelly Gallimore credit, which I think I did in the early rounds. He was landing some good jabs, but then the activity and the combinations, you know, Conwell's just a, a better inside fighter. And if Gallimore couldn't keep him outside with those jabs, even though he was blocking these shots, was blocking the majority of them, once those shots started piercing through the guard, it was the body language, the fact that he was just teetering and going to left to right, and it just forced the referee to stop this fight. Gallimore didn't like it, but it was the right thing to do. So congratulations to Charles Conwell. There's Bernard Hopkins, one of the first men to greet him. Saying, hey, welcome to Golden Boy. That's how we roll. Oscar De La Hoya. How about that suit? The golden boy. Here's our final CompuBox numbers. Charles Conwell landed 136 out of 331. Only 39 landed for Gallimore. Incredible discrepancy. Yeah, it was just activity. You know, it was just, you know, there was one fighter who came with more, more punches. You know, he had more in the tank. Gallimore looked every bit of a 35 years old. So here's our fight card. Conwell gets the TKO stoppage victory. Coming up, we go to the WBA Super Flyweight Interim title bout between Scrappy Ramirez and David Jimenez. We'll see Beck the Bully in action, Arnold Barboza Jr. and Sean McComb in our co-main event. And then, of course, in the main, Haney versus Garcia. Live on the zone worldwide, May 18th. The fight of the century. Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. Tyson Fury looks to reign as king of the division. But Alexander Usyk is undefeated and coming for the crown. For the first time in over 20 years, all the belts are on the line. Ring of Fire, live on the zone worldwide, May 18th. Buy now at DAZN.com. Welcome to Fight of the Year. Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia, they're fighting really as the face of boxing. Now that I'm at the top, I got to spice it up a little bit. Here we go. I like to have fun. I hate waiting. I got enough jewelry. I could be a jeweler. You're too fly for Ryan. Ryan don't know how to pull it off. Upstairs, top limits. He's like a diamond that's a fake diamond. It looks good, but has no weight. Oh, you're a boxer? Oh, okay. <laughs> I saw you in the ring a few times. Yes. You know your boxing? Kill or be killed. I'm going to grip that green belt off of Devin Haney if I have to. This is only the beginning. They just keep lining them up, and I'm going to just keep knocking them down. What, what has changed that makes you want that championship now so bad? Well, I just had a plan in my head since I was uh coming into the you know professional rankings I, I want everybody to know my name at first i want people to see my talent see what i could do 
um, build a big fight and, and, you know, have spectacular events. And now, you know, I, I've been boxing since I was seven years old. I feel like I deserve to give myself a chance to become a champion. I've always, you know, was I was the best in, in the amateurs. I won a lot of national titles and I feel like I'm seeking and, and I'm longing for a championship title now. Like, I want to be able to see me like, okay, he's not only a superstar, but he's also a champion. Mm. He also, you know, can be the best. The zone is the global home of women's football. History is to be written in the women's game tonight. Enjoy the best live games. Great chance, go! From the world's top leagues. What a moment. Absolutely magnificent. It's their time. Oh, it's gone in. Fabulous finish. A new deal for women's football. Brooklyn, New York is the scene for a fascinating fight tonight between Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney. We have an incredible fight coming up for you this evening uh, here at the Barclays Center. It's one we've been looking forward to for an awfully long time. Uh, Devin Haney, of course, the 140-pound champ in the light, super lightweight division. Uh, he is the WBC champ, sorry, is what I was trying to say. Uh, so yes, absolutely brilliant fight that we've got coming up for you. There is so much great content about this matchup on the DAZN platform. You can check out Off The Cuff, Face Off, DAZN's 40 Days documentary series, which takes an intimate look into the lives, training camps, and mindsets of both Devin and Ryan as they prepared for tonight's battle. Now that I'm at the top, I got to spice it up a little bit. He's delusional. I don't know what he's talking about. We'll go after him and go get him. Simple. They just keep lining them up, and I'm going to just keep knocking them down. This is a Ryan Garcia fight. Like, this is a show. I'm just on a different level. Like, it's time to run it, you know? Well, next week, uh, DAZN has more live action for you. Juanes Tejas takes on uh, Joseph Jackson on Friday, April 26th in Orlando. A day later, we got the former British super bantamweight champion, Mark Leach, stepping in on late notice to face Peter McGrail at the Exhibition Center in Liverpool. Later on that day, you got Jose Ramirez making his 2024 debut with a headline bout against Rances Bartelemy. Virgil Ortiz Jr., by the way, also fighting on that card. All of that and so much more is available to, available to you uh, live on DAZN. In fact, make sure that you check out the full boxing schedule on the DAZN platform. You can find everything that DAZN has coming up, including a huge Cinco de Mayo fight for undisputed at super middleweight between Saul Canelo Alvarez and Jaime Munguia. Canelo versus Munguia, live on the zone, May 4th. So can Jaime Munguia pull off the biggest upset of his life in just two weeks' time? We are going to find out. And on June 1st in Saudi Arabia, there is another historic night of boxing. Matchroom versus Queensbury. Two of the biggest promoters in boxing, two eternal rivals facing off their best fighters in an epic showdown headlined by a career-defining fight between Deontay Wilder and Gilles Zhang. Zone have teamed up to give audiences an exclusive look at the biggest up-and-coming boxers in the world. Oh, and it's over! That's a big knockout on the big stage. Learn more at OnlyFans.com slash DAZN. Well, we got three more fights on the card before we get to that one. Next up for us, John Scrappy Ramirez versus David Jimenez for the vacant interim WBA super flyweight title. Ariel Helwani caught up with Scrappy. Kate, okay, thank you very much. Scrappy, you are such an energetic, fun-loving guy. You have so much charisma. Moments before you walk out, what's going through your mind? I'm enjoying the moment, Ariel. This is something I've been working for for the past seven years, so this is my time, you know? And uh, I've been here before, so time to uh, have fun and capitalize on the moment. Got very heated at the weigh-ins. What did you take away from that exchange with him up there? Just having fun, you know? He's taking... 
I, I live rent free up in that head, you know, and it's pretty big as you see. So we won't have a good time to go out there, you know. And uh, yeah, my people, get y'all popcorn ready, man. Well, by that time, y'all should 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 have been ready. But uh, yeah, man, I'm excited. All right. So what's the official prediction? How do you get it done? Win by all means necessary. Guaranteed. And then it's off to Japan? Yes, sir. But first, let me stay focused, you know. Uh, I'm known for talking too much and, you know, overlooking people. I'm not overlooking this, man, you know. So I'm focused. Mentally, fi mentally, physically, I'm ready. Can't wait for it. Good luck. Thank you, Ariel. Todd, back to you. All right, thank you, Ariel. As he mentioned, a lot of bad blood, a lot of trash talk between these two. Almost all of it in Spanish. I didn't understand it, Sergio, but I got the gist. They want to destroy each other, and they're about to get their chance. John Scrappy Ramirez undefeated, 13-0 with nine knockouts. Only one loss for David Jimenez out of Costa Rica, and he says tonight will be his night. He couldn't let this opportunity pass him by, but he's got to get within that 68-inch reach. He's at a four-inch reach disadvantage. Here's Joe Martinez. And now, fight fans, we are ready to welcome Super Flyweights to the ring. First up, fighting out of the blue corner, from Costa Rica, here is David Jimenez! You know, I think this has the potential to be one of the best fights that we're going to see tonight, and certainly the best fight of the undercard. And this man, David Jimenez, is a big reason why. A couple of years ago, we saw Jimenez upset Ricardo Sandoval at 112 pounds. Sandoval, of course, has resumed his career as a top prospect in the Golden Boy stable. After that, Jimenez lost a very close decision to Artem Delakian, a title holder, long-standing title holder, at 112 pounds, he's moving up for this fight, but he says he is as ready as ever to compete at 115 pounds. I asked him this morning about the weight. He said, look, I started my career at 115. I only went down to 112 because there were more opportunity there. He believes that he is the more experienced fighter, both amateur and professionally, and that he should be the favorite coming into this fight tonight. And his opponent, ready to make his way to the ring, fighting out of the red corner. From California, here is John Ramirez! They call Scrappy, and he began boxing at the age of 20 after he dropped out of college and had no purpose. So Sergio, he walked into Freddie Roach's wild card gym with no experience and demanded that he spar with someone. And it turns out he became a pretty darn good professional. Hey, listen, if you're going to walk into any boxing gym, wild cards are one to do it. You get some of the world class sparring there against one of the greatest trainers in boxing. And that's the reason he moved up so fast in the pro rankings. He learned on the job. He's athletic, he's strong, he has speed. And once he Get those angles going he's gonna be difficult to stop but like you said Todd he's in there with a very tough fighter this is scrappy versus a scrappier fighter and David Jimenez who's never been stopped once beaten and the only loss of his resume was a very close split decision this is a toss-up fight 50 50 for me yeah, incredibly tough fight for scrappy Ramirez to take at the number one contender the mandatory for Kazuta Ioka's 112 115 pound title he could have taken Maybe more of a showcase fight here while he waited for his title shot. Instead, he told his team, I want the toughest test out there. And I think he's got one tonight. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing this schedule for the interim, for the interim, for the interim, for the interim, 
for the enter room, 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 for the enter room. Introducing to you first, Bobby out of the blue corner, wearing gray with green. He weighed it officially 114 and three quarter pounds. In 16 professional fights, his record outstanding with 15 victories. Just one defeat, 11 wins coming by way of knockout. Desde Cartago, Costa Rica, presentando David Medallito. And across the ring stands his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red trunks with black. He weighed in 114 and one quarter pounds. In 13 bouts as a young professional, he is perfect in the ring. 13 victories, no defeats, nine big wins coming by way of knockout from Los Angeles, California. Here is the undefeated John Scrappy. Ok, caballeros, ¿puedo, ¿puedo hablar de mis instrucciones? Una pelea limpia, obedezca mis instrucciones todo el tiempo, protéjense en todo el tiempo. Buena suerte que gane el mejor. Scrappy told us my main mission, become a world champion. He wins this fight. He most likely gets a title opportunity next. As for Jimenez, he says this is the biggest opportunity of my life. I Qué asco, como que no se puede ver, me cago en la puta. Press conferences, but Scrappy disparaged my country and my family, and tonight he will pay the price. Here we go, super flyweights, and down goes Scrappy right away. Boy. That would have been something they caught a slip. I would like to see that punch again. I mean, even though it was blocked, it was still a shot that could have easily been...